today's episode of the Nate Land Podcast is brought to you by Starbucks Ready to Drink, Harry's, Athletic Greens, and Better Help. Hello, folks, and hey, Bear. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm Nate Bargatze, sitting with Brian Bates, Aaron Weber, and uh, a little special guest filling in for uh, Dusty Slay, who uh, drove his car off a cliff. <laughs> mm-hmm. From what I've heard, I think he's doing on purpose. Yeah, on purpose. So I think he's doing fine. Oh, he made it. He made it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, he'll be back next he was week. Testing gravity. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nick Thune, welcome to the <laughs> podcast. God, I'm really lackluster response from the room on that. Yeah, <laughs> no, people are not impressed. Uh-huh. And no, I'm very happy to have you here, bud. Uh, uh Nick is uh me and Nick have uh, been close forever, a long mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Did a lot of tours. Uh is it fa- is it uh fair to say that I think you uh, you flew in last night and it looks like you flew in and you had your window down on the whole flight. <laughs> is that on the flight? Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I asked for a car today to go get some coffee. You did get coffee. And the car that I was given <laughs> does not have doors on it. Yeah. <laughs> the Bronco with no doors. And I just had to drive, you know, yeah. five miles to get. The Bronco does not have doors on it. And uh, I took them off last week because it was nice. Uh-huh. The weather was, it was like taking the doors off weather nice. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I was gone, and then I just haven't put them back on. And then Laura was always like, that always happens to me. I just yeah. always forget to put my car doors back on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's a fun ride to not have the doors. That's like I mean, usually you take all the doors off. Yeah, I pulled off. off. I did a Starbucks um, drive through. Yeah, and I pulled up, and the woman was like, "You don't have to open your doors." Oh, really? Yeah, she thought that I had like opened my door to. Like, yeah. How oh, these. There's no doors over here. Uh, it's a when you when you so uh, you know it's like a Jeep or a Bronco when you have, when you don't have doors on something and you go through a drive through it's aggressive. Yeah, I mean it's it's it, it, if if you you're in their space, you're in their space. Uh, it's if, almost like you're bragging that you have pants on. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Just want to yeah. prove to you guys that if you wanted to fight a drive through person, I would suggest getting a Jeep. Or something with no doors. That's a big process to go in to just to want to fight. <laughs> but you never. I'm look. I'm not telling you to fight people and drive through windows. But I'm just saying, mm-hmm. if you were someone that like I've had enough with this one drive through person. One day I'm gonna go give him. I'm gonna give him what he's had coming. You go out and lease a car. I would say buy yeah, rent. Rent. Maybe you have the car. Yeah. I mean, if you're a guy fighting a guy in drive through window, your car might not have doors anyway. <laughs> So uh, you might have a Honda that doesn't have doors. <laughs> yeah. If you're if you're doing so much that you have, you're yeah. like I have a lot of interactions with drive through windows, and I it's aggressive. Could be a mailman. Could be a mailman. Mailman. Oh, there you go. That's I mean UPS trucks. The only like thing that. is you're not or female man. You can be either of these. Days. You can be either. Uh, mailman truck pretty low. It's low to the ground. Mm-hmm. You mean a drive through? Yeah. And they're on the other side. Yeah. So how are you I think do you, that. Oh. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Going right. backwards, yeah, yeah. UPS drivers—they're the ones that and, UPS. Yeah, they're just wide open for business. Yeah, Doing you a can just through. attack one of those guys whenever <laughs> yeah. you want. Yeah, yeah. UPS, I think you would. I think people have learned not to mess with them because they the they just are like because they can get a running start. I mean, they got it's like a basketball court inside there. It doesn't even seem like they're sitting down. It seems like they're standing and yeah. driving. Yeah, and then they can just and they could leap right through. Mm-hmm. Mm. Brian, do it. Uh, a mailman go through a drive through in reverse. <laughs> Such a funny image to me. It's a power move. I yeah. wonder if that's been done before. I've never seen it. I've never seen it, but I mean, I, I bet it has to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes look it up. A certain type of person. Yeah, <laughs> I bet they're good at driving in Europe. I was thinking that yesterday. I saw the mailman. And- that's the kind of stuff my mom googles, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> has yeah. the mailman ever ordered Starbucks delivery? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Probably not allowed to. No, they d- avoid driving in reverse. Uh, yeah, they would be good at driving in Europe. Yeah, I think all the mailmen you have to be European. Mm-hmm. It's required to do U.S. mail. Yeah, I mean you got to be if uh, if you can, if you go to Europe and you're a mailman. I mean that's got to feel good when you're like 
I'll rent the car, and yeah. you get to be like, I mean, just nailing it. <laughs> They're yeah. like, sir, just so you know, the steering yeah. wheel. Yeah. I got it. I got, I got it. it. Yeah. I got it. You guys don't have any envelopes, do you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's one thing I do need. I wonder if it, though, if it's it messes them up because they're used to driving our way and not. That's right. So they uh, like they could be a little off. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that could be interesting. I've just found some uh, some literature from the United States Postal Service. They discourage their drivers from backing up. They say occasionally you're going to have to, obviously, based on where the car is. But if you can avoid it, don't back up. Because that's where a lot of their accidents happen. <laughs> I think we talked about that on our uh, mail. Yeah. They were mail saying what's, what's in the past is in the past, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to move forward. Yeah. Man, thousands. We're talking thousands of motor vehicle accidents mm-hmm. from from being in reverse. Twenty two thousand. I mean, that's a lot of twos, by the way. They've really. Yeah, 2,222. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Motor vehicle. Uh, that's too convenient. Yeah. Uh, Through that, the end of October 3rd. Oh no, that's quarter three. Of 2007. What? I mean, this is like a. <laughs> is this an internal document? That yeah, we're it looking is. At? Look we're at this. To see this. It says, "If you cause an accident, what will you say to a grief-stricken mother who has just lost a child?" This is <laughs> well, why so are you? Dark. I know you're like, uh, uh, or to a father whose child was seriously injured by your vehicle while you were backing up. You're like, I'm just trying to be a mailman. No reason, no reason. excuse <laughs> is good enough. How would, who would think there'd be an excuse good enough that you would go <laughs> as a mailman? You go, I had to go backwards because a dog was in front of me. They go, all right, that's a pretty decent excuse. Hey, that kid uh, broke his leg, but <laughs> ma'am, um, hey, we got a couple envelopes here for you. And is that your son? Yeah, lying in the street out there. <laughs> yeah, because I don't think he's alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do the right thing. Avoid backing up while on your route. Children live and play where you work. Yeah. Only you can avoid backing up on your route. (laughs) (laughs) Only you can avoid backing up. Yeah. Yeah. Backing a vehicle is a personal decision. I didn't realize it was this big of a thing. (laughs) Dude, backing up is is the real deal. Is That's this a, like a The Onion article, or is this? No, a, I think the the post office is like we're not joking around, dude. Like, do the right. right. This is literally what it says: do the right thing, avoid backing <laughs> up while on your route. I mean, would you you would leave the meeting and go, "What was the deal you're, with backing right. up? What's going on out here?" What, what if you're in a situation where you have no option, and the guy is just like, "I got to get approval from my manager." You <laughs> might have to call higher up. Hey, I got to reverse like two feet. <laughs> yeah, and he goes. You're not going to believe me, <laughs> but car just pulled in front of me. Guy got out. I mean, I think I want to, when the mailman comes now, I want to, like, right when he stops in my mailbox, I'll just pull my car in front of him and get out and run <laughs> and see what, and just see what he has to do. He probably has to notify everyone in the neighborhood yeah. door to door. Hey, I'm going to reverse a couple yeah. feet. I'm yeah. like four houses down. It's like a ambulance yeah. just starts going off. They I mean, shouldn't even allow to have a revert. Like you should be like a ride at Opry Land. Just you can only go forward. I'm pretty sure the they have the beeps, right? The reverse. I would think I so. they must. Is is the reason because there's no there's no rear window, right? So you can't you can't see anything behind you. It'd be tough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, I mean, I, you, I backed up a box truck. There's no window back there. You look out the side no. mirrors. I mean, there's a point, you know. I had a mailman yesterday. I walk in my dog, and he just like. You know, he'll have treats for the dogs in the neighborhood, and he just slings it out the window. He nailed me with it. <laughs> he hit <laughs> it you like with a dog? four treats, and he just yeah. nails me and keeps going. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> My dog like it, but it kind of stuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you even see him? No, I'm just walking, and yeah. he kind of, they're very quiet trucks. What if he didn't yeah. even notice you had a dog? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, did, he did throw overhand now that I think about it. No, he just slung it, you know, and, and then... Uh, it like hit me with it. Wow, that's awesome. Wow, that's tough. <laughs> do you? Do then you... he backed up and did it again. <laughs> yeah, and you go, wait a second, you're not supposed to back up. Yeah. Uh, all right, a lot going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do we even get into that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we're ever know. Yeah. Uh, don't remember. We talk about drive-throughs. Yeah. Could be the most memorable. But- Part of the podcast so far, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Out of everything we've talked about yeah. so far. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm back. I know we've, I, we're out of this, uh, this episode's coming out whenever. Uh, next week. Next week. 
<laughs> but that could that doesn't mean yeah they don't anything know that to yeah. anybody. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, but uh, then we will be after if you're watching this episode. Wait, next week in 2013. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. If you're watching this episode, that the next one will be up. Will be up to date right yeah we'll be back live we'll be back uh, kind of yeah, live kind of <laughs> live but like that recording the week of i hope you guys don't sit on this for 10 years we're gonna sit on it for a while i don't even know if we're gonna air it because you were here uh <laughs> and it's free to air because it just yeah. goes on youtube but <laughs> we're still gonna hold even, yeah. we're gonna hold on to it okay yeah yeah <laughs> Just keep uh, sending me weekly updates. Hey, man, yeah. we're we're gonna get it up soon. <laughs> Nick, what's up? <laughs> hey, uh, we had some trouble with the audio on that one, so we're working on it. Like so we got everyone out. but yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody else we got. We're airing a couple of them twice, and that doesn't even make sense because they're all on YouTube, uh, <laughs> and they live there forever. Uh, I had so this week. Uh, I had a pretty wild week. Uh, I went and played, uh, I went up to Vegas and played in the 8 a.m. Uh, golf tournament, Justin Timberlake's golf tournament, uh, 8 a.m. golf. They're doing some really great things. They're building a course here in Nashville. And uh, I was there with, you know, Fallon was there, uh, and we did this little video, uh, the Tennessee Kid, because my special called the Tennessee Kid, and obviously uh, Timberlake is the... <laughs> original Tennessee kid. His bag says Tennessee yeah. kid. I thought, it was funny, I thought, you know, I'd said it when I first met him. He was very nice. And when I first met him, uh, he was like, because they invited me out to this. I didn't even know he knew, like, knew me or anything. And, like, and then uh, when I first met him, he was like, uh, I was like, hey, I did, the, I named it the Tennessee kid or whatever. But, you know, in my head, I was like, well, he's not like, yeah. I didn't think it was, he's that much the Tennessee kid. Yeah, I, My special was just named that. And it's like it was on his bag. You're like, oh, it's like, <laughs> oh, you're the real Tennessee. That's his bag in the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's yeah, on his yeah. birth certificate. Now. Yeah, he is the Tennessee <laughs> kid. Uh, so uh, we did this video. Very funny. Rory Scoville texted me this video. He's like, just as a quick side note in this video is just Doctor J. I was about I to know. say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, like just oh yeah, there's also Doctor J. Also Doctor J. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just out of nowhere, just uh, Dr. J. Uh, me and Dr. J rode together. Uh, so we they, they do like a Ryder Cup. <laughs> crazy. Huh? It is. It's, crazy. it's insane. Yeah. The whole time I drove, I just, my head was going, Dr. J, Dr. Yeah, J. Right. Dr. Like I just kept telling myself, I couldn't believe it. Dr. J is awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> uh, just, it felt like you're riding with a buddy. What we were, were just, you calling him? Uh, I would go Doc a little bit. A lot of, people said Doc a lot. I said Julius a couple of times because people said Julius, and so I didn't know. Like you yeah. don't really know what to say, but you find yourself easily just saying Doc. And I mean, he answers to everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was like he was just mean. I'm just driving around and like you know he's uh, 73 years old and uh, and it was just he just is an awesome, awesome dude. Like uh, just a. Like we just were talking about, like so you put, you play like a Ryder Cup style thing, and uh, so is me and Doc versus them two for nine holes, and then we switched up and we played uh, someone else for nine holes, and then uh, and then the next day Doc pinched a nerve, and uh, so he was hurt, and then they put me with this guy Drew Stoltz Sleazy is his nickname. He's they have this him and Colt Nose host the subpar uh, golf podcast. And they're both unreal golfers. Uh, they both played like Colt was like on the tour, and then uh, Drew uh, he played. I think he I don't know if he made the tour, but he might have played mini tour or something like that. Uh, their podcast is great if you like golf podcast. Uh, their subpar podcast is great, and uh, so I played him. But he's like a legit real golfer. Uh, unbelievable! I want I'm gonna text you. Did Dr. J score on, 100 in a game, or is that Wilt Chamberlain? Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah. Uh, Did you ask him that? Hey, was that you? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I go, hey. I asked him about flying. I'm going to airdrop you this uh, other picture, Aaron. Got it. Uh, I, I asked him about, uh, like, when they flew, when they were coming up, you know, I was like, did y'all, They, you know, they flew commercial at the beginning. Like, so, like, back in his day when he first started. Like, can you imagine, like, the NBA? You just got to go fly. To, so, go to that. Oh, yeah. Go to this. So, this one goal. So, this this is the last day uh, of the tournament. 
and we're playing. This is like a 211-yard par three. I was this close to winning a Lamborghini. Wow. I was with CeCe Sabathia and Jimmy Rollins versus me and Drew Stoltz. This is insane. And we're watching it, dude. And I'm like, I haven't had a hole in one. I've had a hole in one on a par three course that I don't really count, but I've never had one in a full round. And uh, this was a very far hole because they have to because it's for a Lamborghini. So they, like, if you ever play in a golf tournament, and they're, Cars are if if anybody's playing a golf tournament, there's hole in ones for cars all the time. They do an insurance thing, but they have a yardage that you have to be, and it kind of depends on the car. And so, like, like it used to like some usually it's like 185 yard par three is what something has to be. But I guess because it's a Lamborghini, they're like, no, it has to be over 206 yards. And so this was like 211, and uh, I hit uh, what did it a little five hybrid. And it, I hit it, and dude, it look. When you play golf, there's times when you the ball goes. You're like it from the get go. You're like this is gonna be. <laughs> yeah. It's there's, there's a it's chance gonna it's gonna be, be it's gonna be good. And so what we're sitting there watching it. It's a long watch because it's flying so far. And in my head, I'm thinking, dude, I'm about to win a Lamborghini. <laughs> and I mean, you got CC Sabathia just behind you, <laughs> and we're like, God, like we're watching it. And I mean, and we see it come. And then you're like, there's moments where you go, it's close. You're like, it looks so good coming in. Then it lands. And so then that's your second kind of adjustment to go, what's it doing? What started rolling towards the hole? Yeah. yeah. So now I'm going, oh, my gosh, I'm about to – this is about to go in. And then it just stops just left of it. Dude. And, uh, I mean, I was like, I would I would have drove home. I would have just drove from Vegas and from then Lake Vegas. Regina. <laughs> And be like, I'll just meet you guys at, at the house. They gave you a Honda Accord or something. That's what I, I, that's, I said, something like that, too. I was like, I should get, you know, something. Did you just, end up uh, bogeying it? or I three putted, got out of there. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the people watching it up at the, because there's, so there's people up at that hole watching that, I guess, is like part of the insurance. They were not, they didn't give me anything. No kind of reaction. No at all? kind of reaction. What did CC give you? CC went crazy. And Jimmy I mean, Rollins? Yeah, yeah. That's they, what I would want. Oh, they all went crazy. Yeah, there's a video. Uh, there's a little video of a CC comes up, gives me a big high five. We were talking about it for like a few holes because it was such a fun <clears throat> watch. Yeah. Like yeah, the excitement yeah. of just mm-hmm. being like, are we about to watch a hole in one? Like, so everybody's like going crazy. And then, uh, so we kept talking about it and like just joking about it. Uh, Had but, to have been the closest one that day, right? I think so. How close is that? Uh, it's about a foot and a half, probably. Oh, so it's even closer than I yeah. Realized. They gave me the putt, like it's close enough. I mean, they <clears> they <throat> just picked it up and were like, yeah, they were like, you're good. Like it was that close. Uh, it was yeah. It, I mean, man, it it just everything looked so good. All right. Sometimes with so many razors or care products options, it can be hard to decide and try something new. But Harry's makes it easy. They give you better razors than in-store options at the best price. I used the Harry's body wash. Used it at uh, Bridgestone Arena. Ooh. Took it with me. It got me, uh, you know, it gave me the confidence I needed to perform in front of 19,000 people. Shine. Shine. Yeah. Yeah. People talked about it. Mm -hmm. The starter set is is a $13 value for just $3 at harrys.com slash nate. Includes a five-blade German-engineered razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and traveler cover. Harry's makes great self-care products, makes more great self-care products than ever before. Shaving cream, sleek, aerodynamic weighted handles that look great in your bathroom and give you precise <laughs> control with each swipe. Um, and they're still offering no-risk trials, so if you don't like the shave, it's on them. Save the hassle, set up your delivery, and get the best quality shave with Harry's. Get a $13 starter set for just $3 at harrys.com slash nate. That's harrys.com slash nate for a $3 starter set. The whole the whole weekend was, uh, I mean, you're, it's just an insane, you know, it was very fun, like, to meet a lot of these people. I'll tell you, these people, he picks a good group to go out there. It's some really great guys. Like, Dr. J is awesome. Uh, we went to the fight. Like, we have a picture of the fight. Went to the Ryan Garcia fight. So that's Rich Day, who I've talked about. Why does it look like Jimmy's outside? That's just... And you guys. <laughs> yeah. 
That's like Jimmy Shine. Hole. Like Jimmy just glows. <laughs> <laughs> there's no lights in that picture. It's just the Looks glow. Like there's a wall of star you. power, yeah. baby. Yeah. Wow. We took a picture right when we left. Uh, Rich, Rich has uh, got us all kind of really hooked up with some tickets uh, over at MGM, and they uh, they got a great guy over there. And uh, uh, so it was. We went in. Uh, it was it was just an all like the experience going there was we left the we're saying the, our thing was at the win and so we stayed at the win. I mean we were one hour within one hour uh, we went to the fight and was back in the hotel at the win because we we had we went pretty late and when we 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 got there we got in our seats the bell rang and the fight started and then once it ended we had to get back because we had a they were having a, another event for the Justin Timberlake thing. So we had to all get back. And so then we left right when it ended. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was the best timing of going to something ever. Wow. That's Pretty, how I like to do yeah. boxing yeah. matches. Just, just pop in, pop, pop in, out. Pop out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't see the walk up. I didn't see, and I like, it was like, that part seems fun though. It's, that, that part does seem fun, but we just didn't get there in time. So yeah. none of the undercard. No, <clears throat> no. I mean, I sat down. When I sat in my seat, they rang the bell. <laughs> they were waiting for you. Yeah. We go and begin. Yeah. <laughs> Fallon gets, I'll tell you what, Fallon is, uh, and I've said it before, but I, like this was the first time we got to hung out with, uh, I've hung out with Fallon a bunch, but like this was a full weekend of Fallon, like especially in Vegas. And uh, he's as good a guy as you want him to be. And I've said it before that he is, but I mean, it's just, there's a lot I take that I can learn from watching him and like the way he interacts with fans. He get hounded everywhere. Oh, it, yeah. you didn't talk about the difference of fame. <clears throat> yeah. It was like, I was, I was telling Chase or with me on the road. I was like, that's the difference is to be like, I can like, you know, I, I get, I can, someone comes to me every day. I get, you know, it's like you get recognized every day. It's not that. And that's the dif difference of being on TV every day. When you're on TV every day, it's every single person knows who you are. And it's people from other countries. It's people from – it's there's there's no rhyme or reason to who's recognizing you. Mm -hmm. It's 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 every single person. I mean, Timberlake is obviously like that too. I don't know if he – I didn't walk around with him, but found no security. We were – like we were with him, and he didn't have anybody with him. Uh, he took pictures. Uh he enjoyed everything. He is uh, – it's it's a good person to – and, Nick, you know, you've been around him a lot too, uh, being on the show. But he's a great person, like, to be around and to watch, to, like, kind of see how you should handle yourself in situations. He doesn't – no one – he does not make anybody feel like a bother. And that's a – I always like that. Like, mm -hmm. when someone comes up to him, that you don't feel like you're – like he's annoyed that he's having to talk to you. Right. He's very good at moving stuff along. You have to move stuff along. So like, yeah, you can't sit there because because it, it would be impossible, yeah. and it's too chaotic to be like people well, that are good at that. I, it's an art. It's an art. It's it really is to be like you give them give a moment. They take a picture with you, but then it's also kind of we got to keep going because it's just you. It's like he'd be out there all day. Well, right. I mean, you just yeah. can't. Yeah, yeah it's, it's sure. just impossible. It's just you can't do whatever because there's too many people coming up. But I mean, he is a uh, true pleasure, and if you met him, he's going to be exactly what you want him to be. And it's it's and it's awesome to get to say. I don't know if you get to say that about everybody, and it's uh, but I can tell you, you for him, you can say it for him. And we were with his assistant. He's at or his assistant Kelly has been there with him for fourteen years. I, I met her when I first. You probably met her when I yeah. like first doing late night with Fallon, mm -hmm. and she's still with him. And like we would, you know, we were even saying because I had Travis with me. I was like, "Do we need like? Does he need any help or whatever?" And she's like, "No, nah, he knows. He'll get out of it. He has to get out of it. Like he you knows. This is what he does." And then she just and he would just go through and take all the pictures, and then we would kind of get going and walking, and then you know get stopped a little again, do it quick, and then go and go and. Uh, That's a long time to be his assistant too. I mean, do you think she'll ever just be? eventually get promoted up to being him yeah eventually <laughs> yeah 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 i mean i guess she's a assistant i mean i think she's they she's i think like she, vp or something she's like what <laughs> no well she's just running his world yeah you know yeah. like i mean yeah i think it's you're above like you're not she's not an assistant like that mm -hmm. she's uh i just like the idea of world. assistants are like someday you know mm -hmm. i'll be you <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's funny. Now, is the sports coat, is that for the after event or is that boxing attire? That was for the after event. We so we went to a. Uh, I've never been to a boxing match. I don't know how maybe you wear. No, people do. You, you think know, they wear? Yeah, why aren't you wearing boxing gloves? Yeah. When do you think that stopped? Do you ever see old pictures of like baseball games in the twenties? Everyone's wearing suits and top hats. Mm-hmm. At some point, people just started wearing sweatpants and t-shirts. Yeah, I mean, it's like, when did that happen? Now Nick still doesn't, yeah. but <laughs> he looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, now you're coming back from that old. Windblown hair look. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you do dress. You're a good dresser. Yeah, I try to. And then uh, Nick would have fit in in those times. Right. When they people like in New York walk around the street. I saw some pictures and I was like, I missed that. I was like, I wish we did some more of that. Well, the thing is, more. is you can get like this suit. If you were to wear this, you'd be like, oh, I feel like I'm wearing a sweat pants mm-hmm. suit. I mean, it's, you know. It's stretchy and it's, yeah. 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 You feel comfortable in it and it just looks nice. Yeah. I mean, I got in on the tail end of that. Back in my day, the NFL coaches still wore suits on the sidelines. Oh, really? Wow. Well, Tom Landry, and yeah. he was the main one. But I other, wish other that was more. Good night, dude. You're just naming. <laughs> you're like, you're like uh, you know, uh, Lombardi. Uh, you know, Lombardi had a suit. I remember going to a game. He's coaching college. And I'm like, oh. Like the, the coach from Notre Dame in the Rudy movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> He got remember his first year. He showed up. He said, "I'm not gonna wear a suit." And we got on him. We got on you, him. You're, you're too small to wear a suit. They yeah. said. Yeah. Basketball coaches still wear suits. Yeah, but even that's getting more, a little bit more loose. Yeah, you could see him wearing like a. I I, I think I like him wearing a suit. I was <laughs> still wearing a full uniform with the shorts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pacing up and down. I would. Yeah, I I, I think I just. I mean, I look. I don't wear a suit, but I try, like when I go on stages, like I wear like nice clothes. Like so, uh, you try to dress up, and you like it is. You want an event, but I mean, you really should. I wonder what the dress code is for an NBA coach. If there actually is like a rule book, because if I were an NBA coach, I would wear what the refs are wearing. <laughs> you know, just to with the other team <laughs> like if you could wear whatever what you want to wear are you, this is a clean podcast oh yeah shoot sorry, sorry. <laughs> just to mess with the it's other just team just a wild animal the sorry <laughs> the out of all the it words the me. worst word <laughs> will you guys will someone mark that down yeah yeah yeah, we're good. yeah. Okay, yeah. We're you're good. gonna be cut out of this That'll whole be the last one <laughs> yeah uh, idea, I think I like Giannis Pop is a, a Giannis cursed had, like 14 times by this point. So you're killing yeah. it by no, comparison. Like, so far, you're doing good. Giannis was pretty bad. <laughs> uh, but that, not a bad idea dressing like a ref, though. Yeah. Now you're trying to get out of it <laughs> and move on. Maybe it's your gold teeth that uh, you can't. Uh, no, yeah. Giannis cussed a bunch. Uh, so we let people. You're all right. I'm not going to do it again. Yeah. I don't want to. You were. It's not because of the rules. I just don't feel like it. <laughs> now you're. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now he's making a point. <laughs> now he's making a point. It's he, over he, there. I could have. I could have. It'd be funny. I'm angry the rest of the episode. <laughs> yeah. You go the last few. As we say goodbye, it's just beep 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 beep. beep. <laughs> you're just like, well, Nick lost it at the end there. Uh, uh, yeah. This whole Vegas thing was awesome, though. I mean, the. the I mean, obviously, it was a crazy, crazy event. They raised a lot of money. Uh. And uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. How many people fit in that that room? Do you think? Uh, I mean, probably nine, you know, eighteen thousand. That size. It's that size. A little less than a Nate. A little Bargetti less than the Nate gets <laughs> show. Yeah. Uh, well, that ring is about twice the size yeah. of the stage that you used. I'll give you the ring is bigger than the stage. Yeah. Uh, I did my my joke at the Ryman. Uh, <laughs> I can say it now because I'm not going to say it anywhere. Yeah. So we did. A, I did a show at the Ryman for Zanies did their 40th anniversary show, and so Aaron was hosting, and uh, so when Aaron brought me up, I I said because I had a joke idea, and I said. Uh, uh, I was like, say I just broke the attendance record at Bridgestone because I was going to have a joke. So he brings me he goes, this next comic uh, broke the attendance record at Bridgestone. Please welcome Nate Bargetti. He brings you up. And then I walked out and said, I usually don't do shows at this small of crowds. <laughs> <laughs> We're at a 2,800 seat theater. <laughs> 2,800. Sold like, out. Sold yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, got a big laugh. Yeah, yeah it was funny. Good. It was very fun. Uh, very cool to get. We didn't talk about this, right? Like, no. It's, no, this just happened. Yeah, so... Uh, Everybody that was on the show, uh, it was, I don't, was that before? This is before. They you waited until you left. Oh, I wasn't there. We were waiting for you, and then, you know, you big-timed everybody, showed up later. 
Why was I late? I was like, I did not mean to big time everybody. I know. Nobody thought you were. Uh, it would have been nice to have you in this photo. Though. It would have been. I should have I been mean, there. Not for, too late. Yeah, they could just put me in there. You could I'm Photoshop in you in. But he, yeah. But you got one at the end. Everybody came back out. Yeah. I don't know why I was so far. Late. I was trying to. <laughs> I was way off to the right. Because you had just left. finished your set. Man. I just finished my set. And I was also trying to get away from James Gregory to like give him. All right. James Gregory is the legend, the been around for 100 years. So there's like in that moment, you're like, <laughs> that sounded like I'm trying to go. <laughs> no. James Gregory had something and uh, I didn't want to catch what he had. Uh -huh. Now, James Gregory is, bless his heart, been around forever. So like when they meet, like he's kind of like, you're like, you're just right. being like, this ain't Give about him. me, dude. Like yeah. this is, James Gregory is the guy that's. Well, I know, had that when I came back out after his set. He was like getting a standing ovation. Yeah. So he, he did like, good though. You backed off of Backed it. off yeah. and kind of let him. You have good proper. Uh, I, I, I noticed nice. that All stuff. Right. That's an sure. Aaron does have that. Yeah. I'm a big like, you never leave the stage empty. Remember, you get yeah. told that. Like I like that kind of stage stuff. And so when you walked out there for the James Gregory, because, you know, he needs a little help walking out right. and stuff. And, uh, you when you you noticed it, you backed off, and I I noticed that. Okay, and good. then I like right. that because I, I it you, shows thanks. like uh, appreciation for what and that I was trying to do that then, but then with no context, it looks like <laughs> I'm just going like I don't belong with these people, yeah. <laughs> and I should be my own person. <laughs> also, though, I want to talk about this wave form. You've got the. <laughs> Looks like the right hand up, and then yeah. you've got the left hand crossing. <laughs> yeah. Is this to say, it's God bless allegiance. America? Yep. I would, if you wanted to start, if you wanted to swear me in to yeah. oath, I could do it. <laughs> I'm always ready to be swearing to oath. I'll yeah. tell you everything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I always think I'm afraid to wave too high because I'm afraid my shirt's going to come up. Yeah. I so, like, I, I when I wave, See, I always. John, John's confident. Well, he, yeah, I mean, if you, his stomach's flatter. <laughs> I mean, I'm... So maybe you're, even in a way, you're kind of holding your shirt down. Oh, my biggest yeah. my nightmare is my shirt. And isn't that everybody's biggest fear? It's like the bottom of your shirt comes up mm -hmm. and you're like, you're skinny. Reality so it doesn't matter. In. Like, you're, but if you're not skinny... You ever see a fat guy fall over? The first thing he does is make sure the shirt's down <laughs> yeah. below his pants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always thinking yeah. about it. Oh, I would, I do that too. <laughs> I was thinking earlier, is it, is a nightmare too? Because like, uh, when we were, we were sitting downstairs, there's a, you were in the chair and I just had a jacket laying over the thing. When someone tries to pull a jacket out and you're leaning on it, is that like a nightmare? <laughs> <laughs> like, did that happen? Did you no, pull it out? No, no, I didn't. Because I, but it thought in my head was like, I would think if a, uh, if like you're sitting on something, and you're like, I'm sorry, and then you realize, <laughs> oh, dude, you're sitting on so much of it. Yeah, you have to like, yeah, you have to lift up. up. Is that yeah. that's got to be? This is kind of what happened on my, on the plane last night. Is the person next to me rested their leg up against my foot, <laughs> yeah. and I realized, oh, they think my foot's part of the plane. Yeah. So now at some point I have to move my foot slightly just to let them know, hey, this isn't plane. Yeah. This is me. And I did that and they, you know, it was like, un you know, she just moved right away. Yeah. But yeah, it's like that moment of like letting someone know like, hey, you're not actually on couch, you're on jacket. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's like you have no idea you're on the jacket. And so then it's just like the whole room sees you go, oh, you're just sitting on someone's clothes. <laughs> but then when the jacket's pulled out, you're like, this Honestly, this couch was more comfortable with that jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like yeah. to put it back. I think yes. in like a kid yeah. could sit on a jacket and you would pull it out from under him and it's not a big deal. But I just, I would imagine, I'm just going off. If you're a bigger guy, it would be, you just don't want to be sitting on clothes. <laughs> Because it means you just back down and you didn't see anything. <laughs> and then you didn't feel anything. You didn't feel anything. <laughs> and when they pull it, it's so obvious. It's like, oh, Ooh. I'm sorry. And then if it's not, a, if it's a corner, you're like, oh, no big dude. deal. But if it's like, yeah, it's all warm now. Yeah, yeah. you're like, you got to, I need you to you stand up. You got to stand up. Oh. It actually got caught kind of in your belt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Big guys have the same rules that. Mail trucks do about backing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do it if you at all possible. It, that's very funny. Yeah. You don't do it <laughs> if they go, it's on you. What's the, can you have that thing pulled up uh, still? I, I got no. rid of it. No. Oh, it's, what is it saying? Like, uh, oh, here it is. Uh, let me just see. The same as big as it go. Uh, am, I am I backing up because I'm in a hurry? 
<laughs> is there a safe alternative to backing up? Is backing up my last resort? <laughs> Could someone be behind me? Perhaps a child. That's a big one. Am I relying on lady <laughs> luck? These are the questions you ask yourself as a big man backing up. Backing up, up as a big guy is a personal decision. Is someone yeah. behind me? Perhaps a jacket? Perhaps a jacket. <laughs> In most situations, you choose to maneuver yourself to avoid backing up. The safety of others depends on you. Do the right thing. Avoid backing up when you're in someone's house. Yeah, what will I say to a grief-stricken yeah. mother who's just lost a <laughs> <Yeah>. child? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Children live and play where you walk around, <laughs> in the neighborhoods, <laughs> in the houses you're going to. All it takes is one second for a child to dart behind you as you as back you're up. To sit down. <laughs> Only you can avoid backing up. Man, that's look at that. Oh, that's that funny. was great. That's funny. That was great. Mm. Uh, you, Nick, I've seen Nick, you're, you're, uh, my favorite thing is you can be confrontational is the guitar. Remember when we were flying and you put the guitar up? Yeah. Cause Nick will be, I love, uh, I love confrontation if I'm not, if it's not me, but I'm like kind of in, I can see it. Front and it's row like, seat to it, yeah. if I got a front row seat to it, uh, Nick is one that's great. I've I've lately taken the back seat. Like a, a a mom at my my son's soccer game last week got confrontational, and I kind of egged her on to it. You know, yeah. I was like, "Did you see that? I mean, that was a handball. Yeah. I didn't even." <laughs> and I know that she's like ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm egging her on. Now you're doing it. Now yeah. what happened with the guitar on the plane? It's just you know having a guitar, traveling with a guitar. Everyone from the car that you're in to once you get on the plane is telling yeah. you. We can't, that won't fit on the plane. That won't, all the employees, the whole airport staff. And then when you get on the plane, they're like, oh yeah, you can put it anywhere you want. Right. Want me yeah. to hold it the whole flight? I mean, yeah. they don't care. But but trying to like get it above, you know, the seats, it can be an issue. And Yeah. I don't. He was, you were sitting there and you go, uh, whose uh, suitcase is this or something? <laughs> yeah, sometimes because you don't want it. I've done that where you just touch somebody's suitcase and you're like, hey, don't touch my suitcase. It's like, yeah. oh, sorry. You know. So he's asking, he's doing the right thing. Whose suitcase? This is nobody's suitcase. No one's answering. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of an awkward thing because it's like he's asking and it's we're all sitting there where you're like, it's somebody's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that somebody is right here and no one's answering. And so he goes, Well, I'm gonna move it over. Just to the other side, like just move it. Just talking to the to the, <laughs> to the void <laughs> to the air. So if anyone's listening, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna move this over to the other side. And he moves it over, and then uh, puts a suit. And then then a, the guy's like, "That's my suitcase. Don't touch it." You're like, "Well, I mean, you've been at." He's been asking the whole time. Well, no. Then I and I. <laughs> then you sit next to the. No, I, the guy goes, that, that, "Don't touch my suitcase," and I'm like, "Well, I already." mentioned it you know and he was like yeah just put it back and i go i looked at his wife and i go you want to talk to your husband about who she should be talking to yeah who he should be talking yeah, to yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it just got line. real quiet yeah. it got real quiet and then he sat down next to him for the whole flight <laughs> and nate looked at me like thank you yeah, yeah. oh i loved oh, it i awesome. i mean just an uncomfortable uh it was great but it, nick did the right th i mean he was asking very politely very right. nice very charismatic. You gave him and a then chance. in the end, I was an absolute jerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just can't can't do it. Can't. But you? that's better than the last one. So oh, you're, yeah, you're going yeah, the right yeah, direction. You're working yeah. the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going down. Yeah, we're going yeah. down. <laughs> we're doing good. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna get you right. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. I think all of us are trying to take our AG1 by Athletic Greens every day. We all gave AG1 a try because we wanted increased energy and immune system support for our busy lifestyles. We all try to take AG1 in the mornings before starting the day, and it makes us feel like we're doing something good to cover all our nutritional bases. I had it this morning. It's, it's just the way to start the day. It's great. It's much easier. You can attest to this. It's much easier to mix the one scoop of powder in water once a day than to take a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. It's the healthiest thing you can do in under a minute, and it costs less than $3 a day. Mm. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. Since we travel so often, we also get this. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's all right. I let it get go. It together. <laughs> Since we travel so often, we also try to get the single serving travel packs. So we never have to miss a day when we are on the road. You can get a free monthly delivery to, to make it. All right. You can get free monthly delivery to make it even easier. 
Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Every scoop has 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients of the highest quality that have major benefits like gut <laughs> and mood support. He's... Okay. They're just laughing. I mean, we all drink athletic greens. <laughs> Y'all are just laughing. It's well, we feel good. Yeah, you feel good. We feel good. Boosted sure. energy. Uh, listen, you're happy. AG1. Yeah. Listen, every scoop has 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients of the highest quality that have major benefits like gut and mood support. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what's yeah. happening. I mean, yeah. Brian slurped some tea. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it goes down easy <laughs> like athletic greens this is athletic greens right here yeah okay <laughs> okay um listen there's major benefits like gut and mood support boosted energy and even healthier looking skin hair and nails <clears throat> <clears throat> ag1 has been part of millions of mornings <laughs> Sorry. Right. I don't know what Sorry, happened dude. to me. <laughs> Just finish it, dude. Here, I'll finish. Uh, <laughs> some reason, they're <laughs> laughing like crazy. We don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, every scoop has 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients, as you said. AG1 is, uh, uh, we use it all the time. It's very easy to take it. Uh, it, 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 it's what you should take. It's vitamins. It's great. And we love it so much. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Nate. That is athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Check it out. Uh, we need you to now after what they just did to it. Uh, it is great. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. Uh, let's. We need. Did y'all have anything, or we need to read these comments? Or? Yeah, let's just get the comments. Let's get some comments. It's hard to top your weekend, Nate. Yeah. Uh, Josh and Jane Maida, Maida. Thanks for creating content. My twelve-year-old daughter and I can both <laughs> listen to on the way to school. <laughs> it's gotten hard to even listen to the radio in the morning without worrying about what inappropriate topics are going to come up. Nate Land is both fun and educational. All right. That's what we're here for. Educating. Some 12-year-old kid's going to be in school like, hey, did you know that a mailman can't back up? <laughs> You're like, shut up, dork. Yeah. <laughs> but if you bring up, yeah, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> Never mind. Tommy Bowles. 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 I hope it's Bowles. <laughs> I hope it's Bowles. It's, either way, it's a movement. Yeah. Either way, it's a movement. Oh, too. Yeah. That was good. Tommy, Yeah. <laughs> Tommy Bowles coming in. I mean, imagine every time someone, he has to get up and go. Hey, BM. Yeah. BM is tough. He's got to go to, he's like, I got to go to the bathroom fast. Oh, I bet you do. Tommy Bowles. He's like, oh. <laughs> Release re the bowels. Release the bowels. Uh, I recently saw an ad for a Nate Bergetti t-shirt with Nate's name on the breast. I struggle with wearing some of the dude's name around, even jerseys of famous players. I make up a rule in my head that the person has to be older than me if I'm going to wear something with a name on it. I like y'all's take on wearing jerseys, shirts with names of others on them. I agree with the person, them being older than you. So I'm, I guess I'm not older than him. You can wear Tom Brady's jersey and that's yeah. it. Yeah, I yeah. can wear Tom Brady's jersey. Uh, it's uh, – I do agree with you. And we have our name – like that's why a lot of the stuff we have Nate Land too on some stuff now because it's like I do get it's like tough. But it's, some of it's like the tour shirt, so it's a Nate Bergetti tour, so it's like uh, okay. you have it on there. But I understand what he's saying. I mean I'm wondering – he only has one breast? That's true. One name on the breast. It's just yeah. kind of a weird way to describe it. I, think. I wish he would have just said breasts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he just said – but it's all, my name's only on one breast. Okay. It's not on the other. Uh-huh. So, so it just says Nate? Yeah. Like it's a work shirt? Yeah. Nate yeah. Bargetsy. But it says name – Your name – Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. It. So it says Nate Bargetsy on the <clears> – I thought yeah, no one – you didn't get it? No, I have that shirt. Oh. Yeah, I love that shirt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't. I, th I thought it just meant across that. I didn't say that's just a weird way to describe a yeah. Like shirt. I don't think he. I just. Th I thought he described it perfectly, Tommy. Yeah, well, bowel movement over here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talking about breasts. Uh -huh. Yeah, I thought he nailed it. Wear whatever makes you comfortable, Tommy. 
I understand. You know? But would you but wear I, I've wore like the Titans jersey. You got like uh you know, Derrick Henry. You got a Henry jersey. But I wore it because they like gave, they it, gave it, to, it to you. I could understand. Somebody if, gives you a jersey. Yeah. Whatever. But I could see wearing if you have a Henry jersey and you're going to the game and you're like, I don't know. Some of the football jersey you're like I would say if you're in the environment of the game, I don't think it really matters. Cause it's like mm-hmm. you're going to the game wearing it to like the grocery store. Yeah, that's crazy. And then you should be. I think adults, you shouldn't be really wearing jerseys. Like you yeah. should be wearing them at the game, but don't wear them. No, I think the opposite. <clears throat> wear them only in grocery stores. You don't stores. think you should wear them at the game? No. If you're, in my case, Derrick Henry could be my son. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great grandson. if he was? <laughs> could be your grandson, maybe. In between, maybe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah. what if they need you? Yeah. You've already got the jersey. There you go. You're ready to go. Well, I mean, your age, you're just too old for jerseys. <clears throat> yeah. But you? you watch coaches wear suits. So <laughs> you probably could never get a new jersey. I mean, you would go to. It would be tough. Dr. J. <laughs> yeah. 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 It would be tough. Uh, you'd go to a football game with a newspaper, one of those hats on. Mm hmm. Little pen, pencil. Box, keep the box score. Keep the box score. I would do Have that. Have you ever kept the box score? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. At a game? Um, when I was a kid, yeah, I would go to the Nashville Sounds game and yeah. keep box scores. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I stole first base, the parent that was keeping the box score had a, a race. <laughs> yeah. <and> yeah. <laughs> you stole from home? No. I stole second, and then I stole first. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's a whole thing. It'd uh-huh. make you curse again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Corey O'Brien. While the last airline to ban smoking did so in the late 90s, you still see ashtrays in airplane bathrooms. The reason you see this is because of the few idiots that think they can sneak in a cigarette break in the bathroom. If they're dumb enough to smoke on a plane, you better bet they're dumb enough to start a small fire 30,000 feet in the air. The ashtrays are for that exact reason. Wow. So they, they're, they're, they're almost like saying it's okay to smoke. Give you an option, sounds yeah. like. I don't think many people are ripping cigs in the bathroom. I think it's all vape now. I well, I think now it's all vape. I think yeah. if you're and I think a pretty good amount of people are just vaping at their seat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they just blow it into their yeah. shirt or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think now, but I mean I, I bet people did would go try to sneak a cigarette in. Sometimes you miss that old stuff, man. That's a weird one, like People smoking on a plane, is people smoking cigarettes, I'm not, you shouldn't smoke cigarettes. I thought about that this uh, weekend. The plane is so small. Just to think that everyone was just ripping cigarettes back mm, then. You're like, golly. They'd crack a window. They had a smoking section. <laughs> yeah. They had, yeah, they did have a smoking section. It was in the back. There's the, the uh. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. it walled off with like a. No, no, no. I think you smelled like cigarettes. I, but I think back then you just smelled like cigarettes. I think right? everyone, yeah, every jacket you own. Just the world yeah. smelled like cigarettes. Yeah. 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 But there's something nice about that. <laughs> it's like there's something. It's the older I am. I mean, remember doing, you were doing comedy in places that people are smoking. Yeah. And I remember just being on stage and just seeing, you would see the smoke rise and you knew. All right, I'm either got to just wear this exact same thing all weekend, mm-hmm. or everything I own is going to smell like mm-hmm. cigarette smoke all weekend. But there's something that you kind of miss about it, like it's uh, like an old school. Yeah, it's just the the idea of it's nostalgic, you know. Yeah, I think that's it. Like if I see someone sm- like an old dude seeing him smoke cigarettes, sometimes I was like, hey, good for you, man. <laughs> Sticking it to the man. <laughs> Don't smoke though, kids, because I mean it's not good for you. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but. Just, just be like when you see an old man doing it. Just be like, you know, just yeah. Tap the little, cap, tip the hat. Salute. It's like an old dinosaur. You know, you're seeing like an old dinosaur. You're like, right, ain't gonna right. be many more of those left. Right. Enjoy. It Enjoy while you can. it while you can. Enjoy watching someone doing it while you can. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Chamberlain. Ooh, maybe Will Chamberlain's son. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've been a fan Let's of see Nate's. If this comment scores a hundred points or not? <laughs> oh, I've been a fan of Nate since Full Time Magic. He's up. <laughs> I recently went down a Nate YouTube rabbit hole and saw a set at the Laugh Factory. Uh, when he was talking about Target, Walmart, and Kmart, he used a bad word. It was so strange. I'm just curious on his thoughts about it. It's funnier when he says, I'm not old money. So I'd love to hear his thoughts and his process of how he worked that joke. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Nick, now it's now on the, the other table. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. I Funny Mouth. <laughs> I don't remember what I said. I think... Uh, <sighs> Probably the SH word, I bet. No. I thi- oh, it, it was uh, the uh, second word he used. Oh. 
Oh. I'm not old money. I'm not a. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what I said? Mm-hmm. I don't even remember that. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. Uh, that, if I, I would have done it then, because it was like at Laugh Factory and it was like, you're not in front of a, you're in front of a crowd that's seen dirt, dirty. So, you know, it's like, I would think like, I was always clean, but then some, like, sometimes you would think like it's late. Not a lot of people like, I need this one. Mm-hmm. maybe word and i wasn't a good enough comic to think like that word just would get the laugh and i wasn't a good enough comic to uh not i mean i was i could basically not do it i have another one yelled at by a clown where i'm like don't be a mm-hmm. you know uh the one where you follow, follow the person home yeah yeah it's one of my favorite jokes i know and that that one i, ta- I asked my dad about I, when i did it i was like talking to him i go i don't i can't think of another word to say here like this word works mm. so good mm-hmm. and i can't figure out a way to do it and i told my dad and then he my dad you know luckily being a comedian basically you know my dad's like no i mean yeah if it if it's the word that needs to be used for the last like he's like you know because i'm not using any other word mm-hmm. you know what i found is that if you actually just say the word as if you're saying the other word mm-hmm. because it's really like the way that you're projecting the yes. word that gets it. So if you say another word that in that same way, because usually when you, I think when people replace a word, they say it differently. Yes. Mm-hmm. They like go down. They're not as confident. They do whatever. Mm-hmm. But if you just come out with it, because I did that with a word that I was like, there's no way, you know, that this is going to change. And it was, it made it better. Yeah. Cause you're doing, now you're getting the laugh that it's not the word, but you're using the inflection of that word. Mm-hmm. So you're actually getting two laughs off something. And there's two ways you could do it. You could use the word that everyone knows. You could use a silly version of it, you know, like that is like, oh, yeah, that's an old way that people used to say that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times you might not get the response. But if you just say it like it. Yeah. You know. I've never thought of that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, I could have said uh, fire truck. Like you could say anything. You could have said snitch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which would I should have, man. I did. I changed that exact yeah word. Yeah, yeah. You just hit it with the same. Energy. Just hit it with the same. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. It was. Uh, yeah, I just was in the comic to figure it out back then. But thanks for bringing up that moment, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow! Because God, there goes that hundred. Yeah, yeah. He, goes, <laughs> he started the game with a hundred, and then they found out he was cheating. Uh, and he's at the end. He's like, "So you suck, right?" <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, no, no. It's it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's funny to. I, I that that one. I, I always like try to say it's like that one, and that yelled out by clown. And I know that. I have no like the the Laugh Factory sets. You have no control over. That's the Laugh Factory post that stuff on YouTube. So they have so like I, some of that too was like I was doing a show that night. I'm not even thinking about it being filmed. Yeah. And you're just because you you know it's like I mean truthfully in that crowd there's like t- 25 people there. There's not that yeah. many people there. Yeah. And then they film it now. It's now it's people see it. So I like I would now now I would never like. But if you didn't sign paperwork, you should just have them take it down. I might have signed paperwork. Who know? You Even know, if you did, that doesn't matter. They would still take it down. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, it's not. It's not that. You know, it's. It's. Look, I'm not perfect. Uh, uh, I am now, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then you weren't. But I was not perfect back then. But now I'm. I'm pretty perfect. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, Drew o- Oglesby. Glad to see Nate's tour is coming to Denver soon. It reminded me of the last time we performed at the Downtown Comedy Works location a few years ago. One of the openers was a local guy who had the exact opposite of Nate's clean style of comedy. The jokes were funny, but he was getting very few laughs due to the content and language of his material. I'm curious if Nate remembers this night or if he has other stories of people thinking it would be a clean show only to be surprised by one of the other comics. Nick, do you remember that night? I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, oh, his name was Nick something. Yeah. Uh, well, Nick, you're basically clean. Yeah. Besides right now. But he was, <laughs> but even hearing this, but everybody, Nick's always been, you're basically clean. You could very, you're going out, we're going out this weekend. You'll be, you're, it's not hard for you to be clean. It's, it's, you're, you're out of the, 
transitioning of being clean, not clean, I, you're the easiest to do it because you've already always been basically clean. My last five hours on the road that I've done, yeah. I've done totally clean. Just, yeah. just, just it's not. It's a great exercise, but mm-hmm. you know, also. It does, you know, when when I see what it does for you, and like the the especially like doing corporate shows and stuff like that. Oh it's yeah, like it, yeah, and, and especially where your act is, is no, you're already clean. So it's like just do. It was like Vecchione, like it was like all like great, like they would have little stuff here and there, and you know, but then it was like you're just basically already there, like just commit to it, and then that way you're do it. But I mean, do it everybody wants to. Do. When you do this stuff, and they book an opener, sometimes. So I, I just got to ask, I just talked about it last night. Uh, if you go see, like, if you go see Aaron on the road, we talked about it, you're not always going to get to bring your opener. Mm-hmm. You're not always in charge of who is going to get to, you're yeah. going to come see. Uh, so you, eventually you will be. But you, it takes a while to get to the point where you can bring someone. You can tell the club, hey, I'm clean. People might, if people want to come out from Nate Land, they're going to like, and just, just so you know, like, they're going to be tendency to be like kind of wanting a clean show. That does not mean that the club's going to do it or whatever. It's, you can get, there's a point in your career where I'd imagine, Aaron, you're at, where it's like you're just in this stuck in this kind of thing where you sometimes you can bring your own person, sometimes you can't bring your own person. And are you definitely not going to have your own host? Right. And right. you're at a club. So you're kind of, you're trying your best to, Try to say it's a clean show, totally. but it might not be. And uh, I always think the audiences, when you go, they they understand mm-hmm. that. Like you know, they it's you don't really have a, a huge say in it. Uh, I had a I I have them send me YouTube videos if I'm going to do local openers. Like let me just see, let me approve them, approve of them. Yeah, but I had somebody recently. I I finally said this. I don't know if you've ever had this where. The um, feature act walked off stage and I'm standing there and he goes, they sucked. And he's <laughs> honestly, he sucked. Mm. That was what was going on. <laughs> and, and I looked at him and I said, don't ever tell a headliner that. Yeah. Don't ever come off and think, I want your opinion on that mm. audience, especially as I'm about to step into an hour with them. Yeah. You want me to start off thinking like negatively, yeah. you know? And I, I've wanted to say that so many times to people because it's like, don't put your... Yeah, your experience out there is not mine. Yeah, they're actually here for me. Yeah, this is going to be different. Yeah, <laughs> yes, but it was. I don't. I, I don't. Know. Yeah, I, I've had that happen too. I don't love it. Like, I think they're trying to. It's like it'd be one thing if like it's me and you going up and saying something, because like when we've yeah. been on shows when it's like you're a peer, mm-hmm. like you're just like, dude. I don't know. I thought they were weird. Like you're like okay, but it is when it's someone you don't know. You're like. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't like, – we're – yeah, I don't want to go into it, like, thinking they're not good. And then usually they're awesome. Yeah, that was the exact case. Yeah. I've had that from the opposite direction, though, where the headliners ask me, how are they? And I don't want them to think that I – if I had a bad set, I don't want them to think that I think that was good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I find myself saying, I think they're just really excited to see you. Or something like that, because sometimes they are. Uh, yeah, they are. True. It yeah. may, may very well be true, yeah. but instead of saying they were terrible, and I don't want to really say I'm terrible, but I also don't want this guy to think I think that was a good set. It's hard. So also the opener, you have to think You've about. You've got it. to practice a lot, so you're nailing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've had a lot of yeah. practice. Yeah, <laughs> I've got it memorized. Yeah. What audiences look for in an opener is get me to the headliner. So yeah. you have to. You're battling against them, just thinking you're okay. That's mm. just kind of what they're gonna think. Yeah. You know, like you actually have to either be better than that, or I don't know. It's I. I just see it over and over again where people, like pe- people, will say like, "Oh man, you should have been the headliner." And it's like, well, no, I, I only did 15 minutes. That was yeah. really mm-hmm. easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's not like working an hour. You know, like, it's a completely different yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I've had a lot of that too, where they're like, "Man, yours was so funny." You're like, "Yeah, yeah, I was in a perfect situation." Yeah, yeah. It's going to be very easy. I would say, but you also wouldn't have been at the show if I was the headliner. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why, like, when my show, like, on the road now, like, we have, uh, you know, two to three openers, but it's, like, trying to build that where, you know, it's, like, it's, it's you the, the openers are, it's fun. Comedy openers are different than music openers. I think music, a lot of people don't, like, always, I mean, some people do want to go see the openers, but sometimes people don't. But with comedy, you're, like, I mean, everybody's doing, like, 10 minutes or something up there, like, 12 minutes like so it's like you get to watch some you just get to watch some comedy you get a shot that's the thing is you get a shot to do great 
And yeah. You kind of have to. But well, then ha- the, the audit, but I mean, I, yeah, what I'm saying is like, oh, when I go out now too, is like, and like we just filmed, we're filming this right now at Zany's, the showcase, where uh, the day this comes, well, I know it won't. Yeah. It'll already be over. But uh, we just did one last night at Zany's. Dusty hosted. Uh, Aaron's hosting tonight. And then you're hosting uh, the next night. Mm. And then uh, we're ha- it's all like, uh, I mean, a lot of comics that are like, they actually have credits and like tour and headline and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, but it's comics that can be clean. And we did it last night and it was awesome. And so the whole, it's like, I just tell everybody, like I said, TV clean, basically like, uh, and it's, uh, we filmed uh, last night and it was just, I mean, I was, I had so much fun. And it was, uh, I'm not on it, but like the, you guys are on it. I directed it. and But it's just so much fun. And it's just like, I just want like, you know, the audience that listens to like comedy, I, it can get like uh, being accessible to a lot of different ages is it's a good thing for comedy. And people want to laugh. I mean, that's why Laugh USA and like those clean, serious ones are like a lot of people listen to that. Yeah, because they want to hear. Because comedy is very easy to kind of listen to, uh, and it's just nice to listen to. You know, I mean, long drive, you just hear and you're laughing, and it's, it's a very pleasurable mm. thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I like when we go out. It's like they have openers because it's like, yeah, it's like then everybody can see you're seeing. It's like that's part of the show. Like come watch the whole show, and you're gonna just sit and relax and have fun and know that you're gonna have fun. And you get to see everybody, you know. Stand-up shows are more set to be a whole show, yeah, than it than a music show. Because in a yeah. music show, they do like a half hour between. They reset the stage, you know. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like once the show starts, it's like we're rolling. Mm-hmm. This episode is sponsored by Better Help. Uh, it can be hard to balance things, uh, or your time, and uh, spending on other people. You need to do a lot of stuff for a lot of other people, but you also need to take care of yourself. And you need to be able to talk about your stuff, uh, stuff that you're going through, stuff that I think both of you, Aaron and Dusty, <laughs> should have to talk about. Y'all need, yeah. y'all got something wrong with you, and you should go talk to someone about it. You're right. Uh, we spend, you know, like, if you do, if you're doing stuff, I believe right, you're doing a lot of stuff for a lot of other people, and it's easy to not think you have anything to worry about. But if the more you want to give, the more you need to kind of be able to give, and so you don't. Stuff I worry, guy work on is like I can take out stuff on other people that shouldn't have it taken out on, but for some reason it's building up, and then you just send it in a direction that it's not fair for it to be sent in. Uh, therapy can give you tools to find more balance in your life. BetterHelp can help you learn positive coping skills, learn and how to set boundaries, and get to be the vet, best version of yourself, which is what you need. Uh, uh, you know, it's not for just, it's for people that experience trauma, but also just people that, you know, you're busy and life is uh hard. Like there's so much stuff going on. It's not crazy to go talk to someone, find more balance with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash Nate today to get 10% off your first month. That is better help. H E L P.com slash Nate. Uh, Lauren M. Swiler Watson, what do comedians' days look like during the week when you aren't on the road? Mine look much different now than they used to, but usually I would, I mean, I would golf a lot. So I'd go golf today, but now we have this podcast and usually there's stuff going on. Uh, you know, the, we're, we travel a lot and you're uh, uh, gone from your family a lot. Uh, but our traveling, look at it as like a lot of, a lot of people travel for work and, you know, they're gone. But ours are like, when we're home, we're home. Like it's your, you come home Sunday to Thursday. It's like, I mean, you're just home that whole time. Yeah. You're not going to an office or anything like So you could be home Sunday to Thursday, but then I'm completely gone Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's like, so it's like kind of your schedules are just kind of different like that. But, you know. We're do, uh, you know, just hanging out. I mean, just, I don't know, it's nothing too. Now it's like, you know, you have podcasts, you have interviews, you do, there's all kind of, we're filming stuff this week at Zany's. There's a little more stuff at home, but. Yeah, but like my son, even, you know, like, I'm like, how many, 
I, I see all the people picking up the kids at school when I go, and it's like, how many parents do you think pick up their kid at two thirty and give them their full rest of the day? Like, yeah. I don't have to go to work. Yeah, we're from two thirty to bedtime together doing mm-hmm. fun stuff. That's yeah. awesome, and that's like the way to do it. For me, yeah, you know, yeah, it's a different the, the you travel a lot, but they, I mean, I don't know a lot of business guys that travel that will leave on a Monday and go somewhere till Friday and then they come home and they just live on the weekend. And some of it is because they want to raise their kids here instead of somewhere else. And so they just, that's just what they have to do. People have to travel and then uh, for work. And that's always a tough. uh, It used to wipe me out a lot more too. I used to come home and be like, it's like that coming home from camp feeling where nobody around you experienced what you just yeah. went through. <laughs> right, right. And, and like no one's like, you know, helping you walk into the grocery store anymore. Yeah. And like, yeah. All these things. And, <laughs> and then, and then uh, you're like, God, just, I'm really tired. You know, like I, I, I want a nap. Like I, I usually get a nap now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah. When I come home off the road, it'll be, uh, I mean, it's now that like Harper's 10, you know, either the kids start getting busy or they want to FaceTime their friends or all this kind of stuff. But like, we're be around, like, and yeah, you're just, you know, a lot of it's being around and then you're uh, kind of just hang out and uh, yeah, we're all here and yeah, it's great. I don't know. Riley Allen, Allen. Uh, the first comedian I ever even, uh, I even remember watching was the Red Skeleton on a VHS with my grandfather when I was around seven years old. Why are you looking at me? Because huh? there's a shot at you at the end of this. Uh, wow. Sorry, I'm now 28. I was wondering if you guys remember the first comedian you ever saw on TV or in person, or in Brian's case, maybe an AM radio station. <laughs> uh, and now I see why you're yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian was uh, Brian was at that taping for Ed Skelton. And <laughs> I vaguely remember. My parents watched Johnny Carson. Yeah, and I'd be on the floor playing. And I feel like this was George Carlin. Although, wooden toys? <laughs> it could have been. Yeah. It could have been some wooden toys. Was in plastic there. really around? Rock and horse that yeah. wouldn't run. <laughs> yeah. Well, they didn't have couches yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this was late 70s, yeah, right, right. early 80s. Um, I feel like it was George Carlin, although the joke I'm about to tell is, doesn't sound like a George Carlin joke. But I'm they're playing, they're watching them, you know, whatever. And he said something about, you ever been at the grocery store and you look in someone else's cart and then you're like "Ooh, you eat that (laughs) and for whatever reason as a seven-year-old kid that really resonated with me because i've seen other people's food yeah and i thought that was so funny yeah that's a kid that's the only thing part i remember yeah but that's one of the first jokes i remember yeah little things like that'll just stick because i got it as a kid like yeah other people's food is gross and then when jeff fox were these out album remember where he's like a bachelor talking about like what a bachelor home was like compared to like when he's married i don't know that yeah that was really good. That yeah. hit me. Mine was Sinbad, Afros and Bell Bottoms. Oh, yeah. I, re- I remember we were allowed to watch that. I mean, his, his McDonald's, someone waiting in line to order McDonald's menu and just mm-hmm. being like, how do you not know what this menu is and stuff like that. And like, just he would act it all out. I, re- I remember that. I remember my buddy had a CD player. He was sitting outside the school. And a couple people had headphones on, and they were just howling, laughing, and like you got to come listen to this. And I put it on; it was Jeff Foxworthy doing. You might be a redneck, yeah, oh, just yeah. running through them. Yeah, I remember. That's that. the funniest thing any of us had ever heard oh, yeah. at the time. You know, Thank, I, mean, I thought yours was going to be like like something embarrassing, <laughs> like like for us for being older. Yeah, yeah, like yours. You know, you're like I remember oh, listening dude. to Bill Burr. And yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, that was early on. Daniel <laughs> yeah. Tosh. I remember yeah. one of his albums on LimeWire. Yeah. Yeah. What if I were like do Matt Reif? You know, I just <laughs> you got me into <laughs> yeah, someone brand new. Yeah. You're like, golly, dude. Uh, yeah, Daniel Tosh, very funny. So funny. I remember he had a joke about a poker game with all the world leaders, but you can only bet with what your country's worth. Mm-hmm. And he's like, wouldn't it be great being America? That uh oh, Costa Rica's going all in with fifteen coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I uh, did. I laughed so hard at that. Yeah, he is so. I, I've never met him. His stand up, but he is his stand up. He's very underrated. You as, never I mean, met Daniel. Mm-mm. Well, you, we were talking uh, earlier about the Mystique. He's a guy I know Super nothing mystique. about his personal yeah. life. I don't know his views on anything. Yeah, I never see him on a podcast. He mm-hmm. just he did a um, 
I remember hearing this back when I was doing a lot more comedy clubs, but he, he was, they were like, yeah, Tosh doesn't do radio. Yeah. This is like when you had to do radio all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, he just, that's part of his contract, doesn't do radio. And like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because he was selling out. But, you know, that was also, his stand-up was so joke heavy and, yeah. and, and really well-written, long pieces. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and in a way that, like, you know, Bill Burr can take that that angle that is like shocking. Mm -hmm. He was doing that. I mean, yeah. Tosh was doing that like majorly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying crazy stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was very, yeah. He's very, very funny. Obviously, I mean, everybody knows that, but I'm just, I just think he gets a little underrated. Like, for sure, because you you don't see much of him. But man, he's great. Uh, I was born uh, Terry Weaver. I was born in Alabama when I heard that Aaron was from Alabama. It made me start thinking a bit. I've been able to trace my father's lineage about nine generations back to Germany, where Peter Weber, pronounced Weber, Weber, mm -hmm. left Germany and came over to the United States. Somewhere along the way, my father's line of the family tree changed the spelling and pronunciation of Weber to Weaver. I wonder if Aaron may know much about his own lineage. It's at least interesting considering the origin, the origin of both of our surnames as well as our Alabama roots. Hmm. No, I don't know a whole lot about that. I will say I almost uh, – I'm more likely to think we're not related, that we both lived in Alabama and didn't know e didn't know each other. And one chose to change their name, the other didn't. Yeah, yeah, that would be – if you were from a different part of the country, I, I think there'd be more of a chance. I don't know if that makes sense. It doesn't uh, – <laughs> yeah. yeah. To me, it does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To me, the I whole, would know somebody from my own family if I lived in the same state with them. Yeah, but I mean, you could. He's saying like, but you don't know cousin. You know, you, you know when someone finds out someone's related, and it's like you're like, oh, dude, we're. You remember? I always remember like Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady were like cousins or something. Me and Wayne yeah. didn't. Oh yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, the I, mean, I was saying the the his dad's best friend. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Our family that talked about the, my McDonald's Happy Meal story where they didn't give me a Happy Meal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Dentons. Wayne Denton and Bates are cousins. <laughs> Distant related. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's crazy. insane. Yeah. Yeah. Are they related yeah. to the family in Yellowstone? The Dentons? I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe though. I didn't watch Yellowstone. Yellowstone? Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Laura's watching Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah. I'm not watching it. Laura's going through it. She's, on She's going three. through it really hard right now. She's yeah. really going through She's going it. through some Yellowstone yeah. right now. <laughs> uh yeah. So I hope we answer that, you know. No, I don't think we did, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Terry, Sorry, Terry. Maybe we were related. Terry, let me ask you this. Did you have money or because the we because the uh the Webers. The Webers, the Aaron, the Weber family is loaded. Yeah. So Spoons. uh yeah, we'd be interested to know if Terry he may have grown up the wrong side of track. Maybe your family wouldn't allow his family to come over. Right. Mm -hmm. They were like yeah. the ne'er do wells. Yeah. Here we go. Kelly Jonas. Hello, folks. I'm a newer comic and I want to make a career. I think it's Kyle. Kyle Jonas. Hello, folks. I'm a <laughs> newer Spelled comic. Nothing like Kelly. <laughs> and I want to make a career out of comedy. I've been constantly doing well at the open mics I go to every night, but I want to take things to the next level. So, my question is having a social media presence with a large amount of followers necessary for a young comic to get over at clubs or can you get yourself to a paid regular spot without social media even in today's world thanks for all the laughs and hopefully the advice i do not think that's possible with social media i think it's horrible that that's the truth it's so it's so not a thing that you signed i signed up for when i became a comedian yeah. um but right now the way things are going i mean we, you guys, I don't need to. I don't want to like mention his name again, but you guys mentioned someone earlier who's like really getting a lot of heat right now. Yeah, he did a show before me in Vancouver, and they were like at the same venue, and they were like women were throwing their phone numbers on stage. Yeah, you know, and it and it was like it was not. And he's and he's funny. He's such a good kid, but it's like he's Jeff Foxworthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dusty Slay. <laughs> but you know, it's it's like yeah that. That's how it happens now. That is the only way. That's all the clubs look at. How many followers? Yeah. Can you post a, a yeah. post every day promoting your shows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a completely different game, and I'm definitely happy I started when I started. <laughs> Me too. Uh, and I wouldn't want to go back. Uh, 
Look, that being all that being said, I don't think you. I think you can still be a great comic and and can and can get stuff. I really do. I think you can. You do need a social media presence. I do understand like all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I mean, if you're if you can focus on your comedy and really be great at it and be funny, you could just. I mean, even if you're just posting your social media presence, could be just posting the your stand up clips. That would be the easiest. You don't have to go have a personality of like whatever. But I know a lot of people do like the the crowd work stuff and all that stuff. But I think if you just post actual clips of stand up, like you could do that. The problem is, is that they're being seen way too early. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And it you you shouldn't be seen that that young. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's what was good about our time. Like yeah. I I had to get a spot at the improv before anyone you know like close yeah. to being important saw me. Yeah. And now, like people or assistants are combing through Instagrams and TikToks and forwarding them onto the. But I don't think it does people a service because it's. Uh, Kyle, I would no, tell it you, doesn't do good yeah, for him. I, look, I would tell you as a newer comic, and if you want to make a career out of it, it's like you just go to the open mics, go every night, keep getting, just keep writing, keep getting better. Yeah, social media is going to matter, and it is going to do stuff. If you if you if you don't want to have to create an act for social media, then I would just say just film your sets and post clips of your sets up on your social media, just your stand-up. And then that way it's like kind of a loose way of being on social media uh, instead of having to like have a persona. Because I think writing to be a character on social media, that's like going to take you away from writing your jokes and stand-up's not going to, you're going to end up not like, like these. everybody doing these uh crowd work videos and stuff like i mean is that what your act's gonna be like you can't you know if i think it i think to get the the quick jump is the social media grab of it all but to get to a level where you can tour for the rest of your life you you're not gonna be able to do it with crowd work you just can't you're not gonna be able to play big places doing crowd work. You just can't. It's not gonna, it doesn't work. You can do clubs, you can go headline clubs, and not saying that's not a bad thing, but another, to get to another level, you have to have an act. You have to, people are buying a ticket for a professional act. And so if your act is always just crowd work, it's that's gonna work for a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna work for a long run. You have to, you have to have when you know, I mean, when you go see Harlem Globetrotters. There's a, that's an act. You're seeing something that's designed yeah. to be like. There's it's so good because they practice that thing. Every, right. They don't just go. Let's see what happens. Yeah. You're buying a ticket because I'm going to watch a professional act. Now, if you're at a club, mm-hmm. yeah, it's much different. Like the you know at a comedy club, people the crowd work stuff for the whatever that can be. It's very looser experience. Tickets are cheaper. Like there's a lot of stuff. It's just that it's about the vibe in the room. That that's great. Mm-hmm. But if you're trying to go past that, you got to have an act. I read this. I saw this Reddit <laughs> that uh, like a subreddit where somebody posted like a crowd work clip, right? On, yeah. And their social media, and then somebody commented on it. I was in the audience. No one suggested that. He just said it as if somebody did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's. Hilarious. And then like did a, and then like crowd work, you know, but yeah. it was like, it was a pre-written thing that he's had yeah. set up. Yeah. A lot of crowd work is like, you got to crowd work becomes an act because there's only so many times like, you know, where are you from? Uh, you know, yeah. San Diego. All right. Well, if I've done comedy for a year and done a lot of comedy, I've probably had someone from San Diego. Mm -hmm. So, or somewhere near San Diego. I probably have a joke that I remember saying, what are you, divorced? Here's my divorce joke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you, a biracial couple? Here's my biracial joke. Here's my, like everything, you're just, there's only so many people in the world. So you're like, there's, at a crowd, there's only, you have kids? Yeah. You don't have kids? You're not going to get stumped. You're single? Wait, your name's Jason? Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. (laughs) Say goodbye to the next hour. Crowd Jason (laughs) bit ready to go. Yeah, it's it's and I mean, look, and people that do it are great. Like Big J, Big J does the crowd work. Big J is one of the funniest people we've ever I've ever been around uh, in my life. Big J's f- very dirty. Uh, we talked, about but like he had a clip on his thing where a guy falls down. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. Uh, and it, it's so funny. 
the guy broke his chair and he yeah. just stayed sitting on the ground. And <laughs> during his show. yeah, and he goes, "Your chair?" He goes, "Oh." And he goes, "He goes, I'm doing to you what my biggest fear is <laughs> is someone calling out that a fat guy broke a chair." <laughs> and then he goes. Hey man, you got to get a chair. You, are you gonna just sit there on a broken chair? <laughs> like, like they were, and it's so funny. Uh, but it, but Jay's very dirty. That being said, but Jay's like I, people are great at crowd work, and they can be. A, and there's way Todd Berry, another one, great at crowd work. There's people that can do it. Ian Bag is like unreal at it. So there's 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 levels to it. I'm not trash. I'm not trying to trash crowd work. But I think if you're a younger comic and you're seeing that that gets the clips, I don't, I mean, you're going to feel the sudden rush of just like, wow, a lot of people know shit, maybe some stuff happens, whatever. But if you do not get an act, it's going to, you know, I mean, there's eventually people are going to get over crowd work. This is the Dat Fan Syndrome, right? Where he won the last comic standing. Mm -hmm. And then the first one, Comedy Central, threw him on tour. And after the second show, he wasn't the headliner anymore because he didn't have over. Because he was too young. He didn't have 20 minutes. Yeah. You yeah. know, like he he killed it on the show. And that was like, that That was kind of the first way of, of putting comedians that got famous off of something that quickly without material, like like TikTok or whatever. Yeah. It was last comic standing. Because he, he beat Ralphie May, who'd been a headliner for like decade. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, who could headline everywhere. Yeah. And then that fan was, but he was great on the show. And so it like worked out that way. Yeah. I mean, you get right. When people start spending money on tickets and stuff like that, they want a show, dude. Like they want, you know, they, you can, you can get people to come by it to watch whatever, like, and then come see you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's more of an event. It's kind of a fun thing, but that won't last. And, uh, if that, I, I don't think it'll last. It, it works with your age. So the people your age that are into this kind of thing are very fun. But then once they have kids and like once they grow out of it, that's that I, that's what I would tell comics. Do whatever you want to do at the age that you're at, but you need to grow with your audience. Mm -hmm. If you don't grow with your audience, there's a point you become old and then your audience is not going to be the same. They're going to – people your age have families and kids. So there's a little – you know, there's a world where, like, well, a 20-year-old's not going to go watch a 40-year-old that, like, is trying to act like a 20-year-old. Because mm -hmm. it just doesn't, you know, it feels weird. He's like, well, I'll just go watch a 20-year-old that's doing what that I like. He's talking about what exactly I want to hear about. But you need to be able to grow with somewhat your audience. Your audience is always probably going to be a little bit younger than you. You know, like, I know I think a lot of people come to mind. But it's like they relate to – they're relating to whatever the the – the stories are the fan. It's talking about family. It's talking about very. Well, yeah. It's like, I, I used to feel like insecure about doing a bit, bit about kids. Like when I first had yeah. a kid, cause I'm like, what about all the people that, you know, but I used to be like, I know some of you guys in here have kids and some of you guys were kids and you know, <laughs> yeah. I probably know about kids, you know, so <laughs> yeah. this will yeah. affect you in a different way. <laughs> yeah. 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 Either from yeah. the kid's perspective. You yeah. Know. Yeah. But everybody in the audience, you gotta like, Depending on the venue, you know, you can get trapped to newer comics can be when you leave the New York or LA scene, uh, it's an audience is it's all of the country, which is my big thing with, you know, they don't make TV for the middle of the country. They make it for <clears throat> New York and LA. And that's why so much stuff is gets no views and no talk no one talks <clears throat> about it because it's too specific to just, you know, everybody out there is just making these shows that are just like I mean, you you don't even live on you know you live in a different world. Yeah, like you like you don't like everybody else is just at home going to school and they're not thinking about all this stuff all day long. Yeah. Good luck, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> and, and say hi to your brothers for us. Yeah, the Jonas. <laughs> uh, well, we could probably get rolling. Uh, we've been doing a lot of a lot of we've been talking for a while with these. Yeah, we're having fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what I always say? Life moves fast. Starbucks Ready to Drink Coffee delivers an uplifting boost that can help you tune in to the moment. <laughs> That's a tough noise, dude. Sorry. Just want to show my Starbucks here. <laughs> Rotate that around again. Let me hear what that sounds like. Oh, you're doing it so delicately now. There yeah, it yeah. is. It's Starbucks coffee conveniently packaged for life on the go. 
The bottled Frappuccino coffee drink is inspired by Starbucks cafe favorites. It's chilled. It comes in four awesome flavors, mocha, vanilla, caramel, and coffee. How do you say caramel? Uh, Caramel. Wrong. My favorite is the caramel flavor. I usually start the day with coffee, especially when we're recording a new podcast episode. The Starbucks ready to drink coffee is an easy way to get the boost I need to conquer the day and nail another ad read. Starbucks coffee ready for right now. Shop the full lineup online or in store or wherever you buy groceries. And they are everywhere. And you should check them out. Uh, Noah Stackhalp. You can't keep te- stale cup. How do you say it? I don't know. <laughs> stall cup. S T A L stall cup. Mm-hmm. Noah stall cup probably. S T A L cup. You can't keep teasing us with stories about Nate's pilot and never show us any of it. I I I, I mean I have uh you know what? Maybe one day I'll maybe I could show cuz I had the only thing I have cuz I couldn't I, I don't know if I can show it because I think I, I could get sued for yeah, cuz you don't millions. own it, right? Yeah. No, they have it. I don't I don't have it. So I don't I don't like have like it's not like I'm just sitting on the thing. I recorded some of it on my phone. I like, have it. Yeah. I recorded it on my phone. The whole thing? So did, I'll sell you a bootleg copy. Did you? <laughs> no, I recorded oh. some of it. Oh, yeah. I wish you would have. I, I was so nervous because they were like this was when, because uh, we were a Fox. This was right when. Remember when all the dat, the information from Fox got released. Oh yeah, and like all the emails, the North and Korea all stuff, North Korea stuff, and all that. Yeah. So this is when, when I was doing it, this is what happened. So when they sent me a copy to watch it, like to go through it and edit it, it was like I would have approval to watch it. It would only be, I would only have it for two days, and then it would just disappear and go away. So they were super strict about it. So they're like, you can't film it. So when I would, I, I was able to show my family and stuff. And I'd have to watch it. And I filmed some of it, like, on my phone, like, a couple little scenes of it. And I wish I would have just filmed the whole thing. But I was, like, nervous about, you know, breaking the rules. And yeah. and now looking back, I would have just mm-hmm. done it. Uh, but at the time, you're like, well, I can't. Like, they're not going to let me. Like, I don't want to get in trouble. So I don't really have it. I have a I have a couple clips, though. Maybe – let me just see what happens if I would show uh, – let me ask. I want to make sure. Like, I could show some clips. But I also don't want to show clips and then uh, – I just get y'all gonna see. Yeah. Welcome to we'll have 40 ads in this podcast because I'm paying back I'm paying back 20th Century Fox $70 million because I showed just to make Noah happy. And Nick, you did a pilot with Matthew Broderick, right? Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Where could we see that? <laughs> Nowhere. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, you can't. I mean, I've done so many pilots that <laughs> yeah. I'm like up at the uh like George Clooney pilot level. <laughs> yeah you went to, can you say what like matthew when you felt like it wasn't gonna go good i mean there was definitely a moment where um we did the first take of the live you know taping yeah and um in the, the whole scene is just me and matthew like it's like we're meeting each other for the first time and and i'm like this like big and i'm like all, all over the place and it's a live you know live audience and after the take i was just alive i felt like i just my my body my blood was pumping and i was like man wasn't that amazing and he just like looked at me and he goes i'm just tired <laughs> <laughs> and i looked over and i was like somebody get mr broderick an espresso you know like because yeah, yeah, yeah. that was also a bit that him and i've been doing all yeah. week about like getting each other espressos uh-huh. yeah and i thought he was kind of doing the bit and he's like i don't know man it's just like is this thing good Oh, oh wow! Dude. I was like, well, I don't know if this show's gonna go, but uh, oh. yeah, and it would have went. It was. It all- w- I don't know if it was on him. There was a few things about it. And, and <coughs> yeah, that show was crazy because Pat Oswald was the one cast in my role, and they f- then he he they left, left or whatever. Yeah, and then they they cast me, and I'd never mm. met Pat before that. And then I yeah. he sent me a a Facebook message, yeah, <laughs> saying like, "Congrats! I thought yeah. it was the coolest thing you yeah, yeah. ever done." He, yeah, that that's how brutal that world is. I've been on the other end of yeah. that. I've been fired and then Yeah. Yeah. What do they do? They just come up and like you- I got a phone call less than twelve hours before taping a CBS pilot that said, Hey man, uh my, my manager goes, Hey buddy. And I'm like, He never says that. <laughs> yeah. You can always tell when your manager's got bad news, bad news and good news. You can always tell. It is like a marriage. You can just go, Well, you don't talk like that. Yeah. And then you know something's about hey, to happen. Hey buddy. <clears throat> yeah. Uh- it's like I know if like if it's like hey 
so and so is also on the line. I'm like, oh, this is good news. Yeah. yeah. But this is just your manager saying, hey, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody. And, and your doctor's on the line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We patch Nick's doctor in. Yeah. So we found a lump yeah. um, in your career. Yeah. <laughs> and it's growing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's bad. Yeah. And it's bad. Um, and it's this pilot, and you're fired. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I remember I just. I went on a walk after I got that call. So what do you say? So they so, he said, so hey, you just to give people that don't know about the pilot. You audition as an actor. You go audition for the. I didn't pilot. audition for this one. Oh, you didn't. They this just one was starring it. me yeah. and TJ Miller. And okay, we both got offered the show as a duo together, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, they called and fired me, and then they ended up postponing the shoot, and then they hired a blonde Australian dude to play my role, and then. It just didn't go like most shows don't go. Yeah. Um, but it was a really funny book, this author. Anyway, yeah, it was. But I remember on the phone with my manager, he's like, yeah, buddy, they're going to ca- recast you, you know, and th- and that's not the word fired. You know, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, does that mean I'm fired? And he said, yeah, <laughs> but they're going to still pay you. Mm. Okay. You know, well, uh, I'll call you later. You know, it's one of those, like, I just, you sit with yeah. it and you're just a failure. It just was the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're, I mean, you're, you're, that's the hard part is you're like either about to be famous and you're so close. And I'm not, not that you're doing this for famous, but just the, that's the easy way to explain it. You're looking at it like, oh, I'm about to be famous. Yeah. <laughs> Or and you started calculating your your episode rate compared yeah. to if it was like a picked up for a twenty two episode season. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the hard part when you do a pilot. They negotiate all that your first like three seasons usually. Yeah. Before you even shoot the pilot or anything, before you even sell the show. So you have no leverage at There's all. There's so right, much. Right. None. They're they're like, and so just so you know, in the third season, they might use your face as the main face, depending on how your character yeah. goes. Or and you're like, what? Yeah, what? I'm. Oh, they're like, yeah, yeah. They're like third seasons. You're probably going to own helicopters, <laughs> and you're like. <laughs> This is crazy, dude. I mean, it's crazy. That's, that's my first pilot I did was with Kelsey Grammer, and he showed up in a helicopter every day. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that yeah. Frasier money. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, you you had the option of like, I would be wondering, yeah, how many shows, if people knew, that's what, people always say that they should do a network where it's just like pilots that didn't go. Yeah. And just because they're just sitting, these networks are just sitting on pilots. <clears throat> Pilot after pilot of <coughs> famous, famous, famous people yeah. mm-hmm. that did not go. Like, why would you not just start a network and they all agree we're just going to pump the pilots on there? It's I've been I've been on a pilot before that the week before they announced which pilots got picked up, Variety posted an article like the for sure's, and ours was the picture they used <laughs> of the for sure of the for sure's article, and we were the only one that didn't go. Uh. <laughs> It's dude. Oh, it just. I know what you mean. Like it. It. It feels. It's just a failure. I remember I it's emailed uh, or I text or something Zach Galifianakis like because I was really down and he was always so nice to me and I know he'd like gone through some yeah. failure stuff too and he was just like yeah man I've already been fired from like thirty things you'll be fine yeah <laughs> I yeah was like okay 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 yeah it's it's just. Uh, if you another one advice, if you're in this business or if you're trying to get in whatever, it's like you just got to keep going ahead. That's all. Everyone's going to try to make you quit. No one wants you to make it. <laughs> the, I do know somebody once who was this this girl, and she's like really great and really, but she wanted to be an actress and just like she put up her SNL thing on like online on yeah. YouTube, and it just was not. Yeah, you know, it wasn't good. And, but she was friends with like some uh, actors, you know, and one of her friends that was like a big actor got Morgan Freeman to call and leave a voicemail on her phone because she was considering quitting. And Morgan Freeman called and like left a voicemail that she had that was like, never give up. And I'm like, yeah. You should have like at least let him see that SNL video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because now he's making somebody work. When they shouldn't be. Yeah. It, it should be like, hey, you should give up on this. Yeah. You know, like what you you're great at other things. You're yeah. great at being a friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, self-awareness. Self-awareness is the most important thing you can have in anything. And people don't have it. Mm-hmm. And then that like they don't that person doesn't have it. No. no. And then they're gonna yeah. have a life of misery. But if you don't quit and you're nice, <laughs> you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah. 
I, I agree with that too. Mm -hmm. If you're a very nice person, people want to be around that. It's there's yeah. a lot of times you can be around comics where you're like, they cannot be funny, but you're like, but that guy is it's a running joke that you go, like, how's his act? You're like, eh, nice he's a, the best dude. Though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just go, that dude is the best. Yeah. But you could be like, yeah, I'm not, you know, but but he's the best dude. And there's there's roles for the best dude that and that's like being a producer when their best friend gets a show yeah. or do you yeah. know, like yeah. they're the support. They're the one that is there being the mm -hmm. best dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh he on <laughs> uh, no, no go <laughs> no go Hian no go is that right I don't know H-I-E-N-N-G-O no go no. it's no Vietnamese go. it's pronounced uh, I think the N's silent N-G-O 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 I N -G -O. I like that that's a good last name especially saying it like that N-G-O 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 -N -G -O. N -N -G -O. that's a good name N -N -G -O. Mm. No. Oh, it's just no, I was supposed no. to say no. No, that's have you guys. Do you guys <laughs> watch? Do you guys watch The Mandalorian? No, uh, no, some no, because oh, no. that would make you laugh. So, oh, but, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, I'm a big fan of Nate. My question that I would ask Nate if I ever got to talk to him is how he's able to hang with all of the comedians out there. They are astronomically dirtier than Nate. They all drink and God knows what. Get crazy and really go at each other. I just wanted Bobby Kelly's pod. I just wanted Bobby Kelly's podcast and Nate arrived with Lewis, Joe, Bobby, and Dan. How do you relate to 99% of the comedians out there? Because all of them seem to really love you. Well, that's very nice. No said. Look, you just, I mean, I started with those guys. You just be yourself. The everyone that you mentioned. Lewis, Joe, Bobby, Soder, Jay, like I, all of them, they're exactly who they come off to be. So everybody gets along when no one's being fake. And that's and that's what it all boils down to. When someone's fake, then that's the person that doesn't fit in. But they accept me. Look, I thought a lot about that at the beginning. When I first started, I didn't want anybody to know I was clean. I was just always clean. I never mentioned it, never said anything about it. And I, I mean, that's what I kind of want now. Even like when people listen to this podcast, we talk about being clean more now than ever. But, you know, it's like the people listen to this podcast, it's like I, if someone's listening to it, you should be able to listen to this. What the way this is what I want to do with clean comedy is to go, it. It, it, you don't even have to say it's clean. It's like, it's just comedy, dude. Like this, it's done this way, just like theirs is done that way. And I know it's just easier to kind of like go, this one's clean, that one's dirty. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But the idea of it is like, you should be able to like listen to it. Even if someone was dirty, you shouldn't even think, they're, if you think, oh, they're dirty, that's not always the best thing. Mm -hmm. You should never be, you should be like, they're be funny. Mm -hmm. Uh so I started with all of those guys. Uh, they took me in, uh, you know. Or I mean, Bobby was Bobby took us a lot on the road. Uh, Soder, L Lewis was probably right. Around, Lewis uh, was with me with very, very, very beginning. Bobby was older. List came in uh, right after, and Soder came in right after, but barely right after. I just was moving in, and we all just became super close, super friends. And I was just clean. They never, no one ever cared. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I, I had told Lewis, I took Lewis on the road once at college and I was like, you gotta be clean. Like I'm getting this gig cause I'm clean. I, I don't, I'm, I'm nobody mm -hmm. like, you know? And so I was like, but they, they, you know, they're supposed to be clean. Lewis was like, oh, I can be clean and goes out <laughs> and just, he goes, they told me to be clean, but do y'all care about that? And then, of course everybody goes, no. And then he's just dirty. <laughs> yeah. And then we get a, they write a letter mm. to the school apologizing for Lewis. It would have been uh, much worse now than it was. Giannis once got it. We did a college, and they had a they had a sit-in. Giannis, we might have talked about when Giannis was on the podcast. He said something, and they had, like, a protest. But this was, like, back— Wait, Because of what he said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> uh, you know, I think someone was, you know, gave someone a name. Someone was— uh, Maybe Hispanic, and he made up a Hispanic mm. name okay. or something. Yeah, but everybody laughed except that person. Right, which whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> they the next day they had to sit in. But this was back when <laughs> it is like there's no social media. It wasn't like it was now. So like your sit in just really just happens at the school. It was yeah. in that paper. It could have yeah. town's paper. It could have been the other way around though, where the person that he did it to laughed, 
And then everyone else like didn't think it was funny because that, oh, that was offensive. You know, like it's like, like I have a joke about a one armed lady and people have been like afterwards, like, hey, you should probably shouldn't tell that people have one. I'm like, you know, the only, you know, the people that have told me they love that joke are like the five one armed people that have been at my shows. (laughs) Yeah. Like, that's the best joke I've ever heard. Yeah. Yeah. Because it doesn't offend them because that's just, they're just, you have a lot more one arm people than say, most. That's you a got, lot of one yeah. arm. You'd be surprised. You don't know how many people have one arm in your audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Words yeah. getting out too. Words They're coming out. to hear yeah. this. You got to start doing these jokes so you <laughs> yeah. find out. <laughs> yeah, that you, that's the, your most relatable joke. That's how many one arm people in your crowd is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this lady, uh, she was upset because she left, and that's when Yana said that. Mm. Uh, John Lund. The first ever fact machine, a.k.a. the printing telegraph, was invented in 1843. Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in 1865. The samurai were officially abolished in Japanese society in 1867. Mm. This means there was a 22-year window where Abraham Lincoln and the samurai could have been faxing each other. That's crazy. How did they invent a fax machine then? Yeah, I'd like to see what kind of. I'm guessing it worked a little differently yeah. than the ones we think of. Like, what did it do? A like facsimile, facsimile machine? Yeah, like someone pulled the paper through, then they had to run and get on the boat yeah. and then land and hand them the paper. <laughs> There's no way the printing telegraph. Piano. No, it's the same way that they. Printing telegraph. Here it is. It looks almost like a piano. Yeah. But it couldn't have been that. It's like radio waves or whatever mm-hmm. that you are. Just probably doing like the same, yeah. Beep 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 beep, beep. and then yeah. it transcribes it for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to decide. Do we want to go over those poll results or do the? Yeah, do the yeah, the. yeah. Let's just do the the poll result. Okay, we'll save this can, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So, so we've been doing uh uh an animal bracket. Yeah, we got this bracket here. Someone just sent us this bracket. We did not go through and make it any better or they worse. Didn't, they didn't think we dedicate. Three months of the podcast to this. Yeah, we're just getting started. They truly assumed we would just move on with our lives. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But we have, uh, I've enjoyed it. We've had a lot of comments about it. Do we have any, like... Uh, We've got more comments. I mean, at the time of this taping, we're just on YouTube, 420 comments. And I think it's the third most ever (laughs) comment-wise. Number one was when... uh, Mark Norman was on. Yeah. Number two was the Calgate. Most of those were directed at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and then this one. Yeah. And uh, but there's about four things that everyone's saying. Which if we go over these poll results, we could just cover them. Yeah. I should cover something up top. I'm taking a lot of heat for how I said the word wolf. Well, that's one of them. If you want to show last them. week, wolf. Yeah. Uh, I, I I said wolf. Wolf. The I mean, whole, uh, whole episode. People dude. lost their mind. Over yeah. It. I didn't even notice it. And yeah, then, like, yeah, and the y'all are like, why didn't they correct him? I didn't know I said the word incorrectly, but now I'll be thinking about it the rest of my life. Wolf. Wolf. Mm-hmm. There's an L in there. Who did the wolf fight? The wolf this took was on the, the closest cheetah. One. Oh. This was the closest one. Do you have the poll results? Yeah. I do. I have the wolf, the cheetah and the wolf. The cheetah one on Instagram, the cheetah one, 55-45, These people according are, to fans. These people are crazy. But I disagree with that. On Twitter, the wolf... Mm-hmm. Beat the cheetah, fifty four yeah, forty six. That's 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 who. Okay, you think the t- Twitter which, people? Yeah, are smarter? which one had more votes? I'll, I'll, I'll get the, this, Instagram. I don't have the number there, but it, oh. it was. There's a lot more people on Instagram. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you were to watch a like a pit bull against a cat. You know, it's like yeah, take this the dirtiest dog and put yeah. it against. I it. I took cheetah last week, but based on people's feedback, I've switched to wolf. Yeah. Oh man, what a man of principle over here! Yeah, well, I listen to the data, and I I'm said, open-minded well, I, enough. I heard to... what people say, and I want the most people to like me, so <laughs> I switched over to wolf. Well, the cheetah, dude. I pulled up that picture of the cheetah's mouth, and nobody was swayed by that at all. I mean, it's terrifying looking. But a, like you said, a dog versus a cat. No one would think a cat can beat a dog. Well, yeah, we're talking about a very specific type of dog and a very right. specific type of cat. I mean, that's a yeah, the scariest dog. This yeah, it's a wolf these, is not even top ten scariest dog. And cheetahs oh, aren't even. Well, a wolf hy- is, is hyenas, coyotes. Wolves dude. kill hyenas. Yeah, no, dude. Coyotes are more. Oh, that's the other what thing. are you talking coyotes about? Coyotes are like a pet. Coyotes are like <laughs> small wolves. Yeah, 
Coyotes are coyotes are a pet. coyotes are picking their kids up at school. I mean, they're you know coyotes just, say they're wolves. Just to other not coyotes. a lot of like, No, I'm actually a wolf. First of all, the cheetah. So I mean, we don't have to relitigate this whole matchup. I know it's been, but I just a cheetah could just outrun the wolf. But outrunning yeah. something doesn't have to anything to do with yeah fighting yeah, it. it. Does. It's about winning. They don't fight. have endurance though. I think they actually like can run they really fast. They actually have a lot. They right. they, they do not have great endurance. But you're not going to need a whole lot cuz the wolf is So yeah. they'll just run really fast. So they're then, fighting in the uh as Coliseum. they're running in the, the, Coliseum. the Roman Coliseum. The Roman Coliseum That's how we're fighting. visualizing okay. this. Okay. And then so yeah, the cheese is going to run around for a while, eventually get tired. I just imagine they'll... the wolf in the middle just kind of just like waiting like yeah. are you done? You keep yeah. running? Right. And then just goes over and just rips it up. It's like nice spots. Now, yeah. everyone was really obsessed about the way you pronounce wolf. Some people, hyena, the way you say hi- hyena. Well, that sounded all right. Hyena? I think they were you were leaving out a syllable last week. Oh, probably. Hyena, or maybe. I'm hyena? Hyena. Hyena? Hyena, maybe? It sounds like it just looks Hyena. Like but that was a very close one. I mean. Yeah. And now, what was that matchup? I think everybody should understand if I mess up something. I don't even think it should be common at all. No. At this point. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people did let it slide. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody. <laughs> I don't think anybody's even. They expect more out of you. Aaron, there was one maybe. new guy I'd never heard seen you before. Yeah. He goes, "Hey, you saying hi wrong?" You're like, "Yeah, dude. Are you not? He doesn't know how to read." Yeah. <laughs> but Aaron so, would expect more. Aaron went to college. Did you go to college, Nick? No. Yeah. Yeah. Any. Uh, a semester of community college. Yeah, that's what I did. That's why y'all are friends. Yeah, but I didn't get accepted or anything. I just my I. Uh, <laughs> they, did, did you remember taking the placement test where they were like, "Hey, um, we just want to know what you know, so we don't like yeah. put you, you know." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I just kind of skipped through that, not really thinking, and I showed up to my first day of class to English 072, which I realized like five minutes in was a English as a second language class. Yeah. <laughs> so you know based off my placement test they thought i was fluent in a foreign language yeah which is pretty cool yeah yeah the teacher's like i don't think you're supposed to be in here i'm like ah, i think that's my call yeah i'm gonna hang out i feel and like a leader in here just nail it dude. <laughs> yeah I finally yes <laughs> if nate was in that class how many days before they caught on maybe this guy yeah they may never catch on they may never yeah yeah, I wouldn't know when to say. You get a B minus. <laughs> uh, what's the? I got a non complete in all my classes, and NC was my grade. Oh, dude. NC. Uh, what is it called when you use like don't and contraction? Contraction. <laughs> God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank God they don't uh, have those in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spanish doesn't use contract. Does Spanish has contractions? They don't probably use contractions. I've, I've been uh, blanking on that name. Contractions, I, dude. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, I was going to say it a bunch of times in a joke, and for some reason, I knew it was C O N something, <laughs> but I couldn't remember what it was. Never looked it up. Never asked. Thought I'd do it publicly, <laughs> and then I, I've just been sitting there because I usually get contractions out. Like when Laura writes something that I have to read, a lot of times contractions. I'm, I'm not good with You'd contractions. Be a do not. I, I like. I need to say the whole word. That was. I mean, know. I don't think I've even heard or said contractions in a, a long time. I know you don't say it as much, mm-hmm. <laughs> but you do it a lot. But you do. Everyone does it a lot. Everybody does it a lot. Yeah, everybody does. But I won't. It's like allergies, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was like, pretty good timing. Yeah. Uh, what's that? So I said it's like allergies. You get them, but you don't understand them. Mm-hmm. You know. You don't know what you have, but you know you got it. But you got it. Yeah. Something feels wrong. <laughs> Something is not right. Something's not right. I wish I could put a finger on it. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. What's a... Uh, There's another one, uh, Polar Bear Tiger. Uh, wow. This was pretty consistent on both social medias. I think so, we all took the side of the polar bear except for Nate. Nate wanted to fight for the tiger. I was leaning tiger at first, and then I got swayed. Yeah, I just don't think this one's close, man. People just point out polar bears are meaner than grizzlies. They're, they would... Beat a grizzly in a fight, they but said. a grizzly. I don't think they would. I think a grizzly bear would beat a polar bear. I think it's the opposite. Look up just grizzly bear beat polar. Bear. I think that polar bears are more. I think they have thought to attack grizzly humans. bears have won. Grizzly bears are very aggressive. This one says when it comes. This is okay. Wildlife boss says when it comes to a fight, grizzly bears are more likely to come out on the winning side due to their larger size and more powerful jaws that can exert over a thousand psi of bite force. 
Okay, grizzlies have an uh, omnivorous diet, whereas polar bears are exclusively carnivores. Omnivorous okay. means they mix is. both. Yeah, mm-hmm. why is that? I don't know. Why, why does that matter? That doesn't seem like it's because. Uh, well, I think that's why polar bears are more dangerous to humans. Because yeah. they, they'll eat you. But if they had a fight together. Well, look at this. They this is actually a study conducted in 2015 found that grizzly bears were dominant when competing with larger polar bears for a beached whale carcass. So they've actually seen this. Thank you. Okay. The, all right. But that's not what we're, we're talking right now okay. about a polar bear versus a tiger. But that adds into our element of this thing. Because this is what everybody's saying. So, like, everybody's just knocking off a tiger like a polar bear is. Polar bears drinking Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah. You know, right, right. the polar, like, a, a grizzly bear is just, like, much more aggressive. Type in for polar bear in a tiger fight just, uh, to, just see. to see the scientific yeah because we're, we're there was an occasional one that would say a tiger with those big claws one yeah. swipe it'd be over yeah the polar bear has an advantage we i think we did look this up uh, when we were talking about the polar bear is any metric power yeah. jaw strength skin thickness the polar bear tops the siberian tiger the Siberian tiger is faster, but we already argued. We've already concluded speed means nothing in this. It right? does. We've already concluded that. We're in the Roman yeah. Coliseum. Who cares about yeah. speed? Type Who in, cares about okay. maneuverability? You could. Uh, speed matters if you were, you know, like there's two different kinds of speed. There's like if you're a swordsmith, like, or swords, whatever they call you. Quickness. If Quickness. you, yeah, if like, if you're quick like that yeah. or, or running, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What uh type in uh uh polar bear what type in polar bear wait what no uh cheetah versus wolf see we didn't look that up no we're we gonna didn't. look up some uh uh they're about the same size the cheetah has the advantage in claws that are much more effective weapons than a wolf's claws uh, additionally cheetah can generate force with each bite compared to whatever that means for, I don't know, it's, this thing doesn't know what it's talking about. <laughs> and they're they're about the same size. They both get up to about five feet long. They both weigh 160 pounds. The wolf has short claws but strong jaws with sharp teeth. But that's when the cheetah is the fastest lane animal in the world. But they are speed hunters, not fighters. A wolf's a fighter, dude. But also wolves are in packs, you know. So maybe one wolf against a cheetah, a wolf might be like, hey, where's the other guys? You know, yeah, we talk about like that. The lone wolf. The lone wolf. The, yeah, it's literally a lone wolf. Yeah, now, is the wolf, is it a gray wolf, the one that we're looking at? I, th- I think so. We're I think saying so. That. Yeah, I think all we're right. just saying a okay. common, all right. you know, dime a dozen, not impressive at all. Yeah. Wolf. We're not doing black, white wolf. We're doing a gray wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed race We're the wolf. most inclusive. Yeah. 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 All right. right. You want to go to another one? Yeah, this yeah. is we talked about a platypus versus an anteater. Wow. Okay, this one really got people fired up. <laughs> Maybe even more comments than his wolf. Yeah. Platypus, as so many people point out, they have venomous hind legs. Wow. So we did not mention that last. We didn't know that, uh-huh. but mm-hmm. we picked the anteater. Yeah. But they're saying platypus has venomous hind legs. They would use that to. Defeat okay. it. I don't even think the plasma gets an opportunity to do that. How but, thick is that anteater skin, though? Yeah. Well, it's got to be. I think the anteater is going to realize something's going on when the platypus is taking a long time to turn backwards. <laughs> 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 I don't imagine they're quick. I mean, he's like, bleh, 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 and he's, he's coming backwards, and, and he's like, you better not be there. Like, like he you backs better. up like a mailman. Yeah. Yeah, he backs up like a mailman. <laughs> and he's just like, what are you doing, dude? Come on. And he just keeps walking in front of him, and that's all the platypus has got is he needs to be. He's like, no, no, get behind me. Let's start like this. Yeah. Yeah, I am curious how they use that in a fight, the venomous hind legs, but I guess they know how. And I think it might have just been the male platy- platy- Oh, okay. So does it matter what sex these we're animals have it are? Be, we're having it be the yeah. venomous hind legs. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll let them have that. But, yeah, I don't I mean. Uh, this platypus just looks so what is, weak. What, what about it looks their fat. Hi, Why is it, it their hind get a, legs? It can't give it. Because I'd imagine, because it's in water. And so they would swim. If somebody, so if the anteater gets in the water, then like we're, it's going to be in trouble. But uh, Look at that guy's hand. Yeah. He got a, caught a little platypus. He got spurred. Oh, it's not that dude. big of a. You know, look, they're showing a guy. It's like he, you know, he missed half a day and he's back to work. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not. Is it, it's not like poison. Like it's, it's not, it's not like it's like, uh, like people think scorpions are going to yeah. kill you, but scorpions are just 
venom. Like it's like getting stung by a bee. Yeah, yeah. That's how this is. So the anteater is just so much more powerful. But I don't know. I mean, it was a. Clo- I thought we had a close argument last week, and we finally went anteater. So that should be enough to sway it the other way. Yeah, here's a good diagram of where that venom comes from. There, a little dispenser right there above the, the yeah. claws. Mm. I'm still going. Any a lot has got a lot has to happen for that the platypus you got to imagine beep beep, beep. Right. <laughs> bastards backing up. <laughs> Look, I think it's going to be a good fight. I think it's going to be worth the price of admission. It'll be, be better fight. Than, I think people think it's not going to be a good fight, and the people will be like, "Wow, that was actually one of my yeah. favorite fights." Yeah, but mm-hmm. the anteater comes out and wins. Okay, the next one we got up here, we got an eagle versus a barn owl. I mean, we went eagle, no problem. Oh, I think yeah. Dusty tried to fight for a little bit for the barn owl. Not even close. But, he did. Yeah. There, there was a big occasional comment saying, you don't know how mean barn owls are. And somebody sent us a video of a barn owl swooping in and stealing an eagle's baby from the nest. Oh, it was pretty crazy. Wow. Yeah. But, I mean, it's pretty dominant. Yeah. Overall. Overall, people are like eagles. would eighty nine eleven on Twitter. I mean, that's mm-hmm. pretty much a consensus. Is that a whole thing about bald men <clears throat> getting murdered by owls? Have you heard of this? I have a joke about it. You do? About eagles, yeah. right? Eagles. Oh, I heard. Oh, not out. But I have a joke about eagles. They they swoop down and hit uh, bald men in the head. Cause oh, they, that's where I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 that's, you're still yeah, doing better than that. I think I now yeah. remember where I heard that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you all about it. Yeah. Well, it's it's also the uh, the the owl theory is with that documentary, the staircase. Oh, yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's where they. Because when you hear that, you're like, I remember when I first heard it. Joe Zimmerman uh, on his new uh, his special when it comes out. Greg Warren special is out right now. Go check that out. Uh, Joe Zimmerman special is coming out soon. He has a joke about that, the staircase with the owl, because they kind of briefly like talk about it, mm-hmm. and then you're like, there's a lot of things that sound like. If you watch the documentary the Staircase, uh, there's there's a things in it where you're like, dude, this owl could have really been what happened. Mm-hmm. It seems like that's what happened. But I mean, there's other cases that you go, well, no, it's not. Well, they he found did. owl feathers in yeah. her hair, microscopic yeah. owl feathers. Yeah, but I mean, that could come from just they have a lot of owls in the backyard that could be, you know. Oh, I don't know. Is this a murder or something? Yeah. 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 The, the, he was think a writer. may have done it. Yeah. No, that was like, it's a, like a fringe theory that started on Reddit. And, oh, okay. Yeah. But they mentioned it in, in the when you watch the documentary, but then they just very briefly mention it. Then they don't, they move on from it and they don't really talk about it. So you have to go to Reddit to like look it up and like, or like be like, well, why are they not talking about this yeah. as an option? But the thing that hurts the most is the guy also had another lady die downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. that... His, his other ex-wife. His, yeah, his other ex-wife <laughs> fell downstairs and died. So all that being said, you're like, it could be the owl are insane. Like if an, owl, if an owl and him are in court, and even if the owl did it, it's pictured both of them in court. Yeah. Owl's in court. Mm-hmm. This guy's in court. And the judge, and they're getting. The owl's got that one. He's got the one. Yeah, he because they tell him to dress up. So he's got the, <laughs> he's going. Yeah, he's, he's got the monocle because he's going to court. Yeah. So he's in court. And the owl is like, I totally got this lady. And uh, then the guy's like, I mean, there's owl stuff in it. And, and the owl just goes, Show me where I've done this before. <laughs> yeah. That's all he has to keep saying. Yeah. He goes, Hey, uh, real fast. What happened? Where's your uh, is your ex wife coming to this? <laughs> She's not because she also was pushed downstairs. <laughs> I mean, you, you have no chance. Yeah. And then he's like, they, the tr- the stairs are also on trial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the stairs didn't show up. Well, you know what's crazy about that documentary is that the filmmaker and the guy who it's about fell in love while making it. Hmm. Wait, the filmmaker and the guy. The person who yeah. filming the documentary is yeah. supposed to be an objective documentary. Yeah. And the guy being accused of murder yeah. fall in love yeah, wow. throughout it. Yeah. So when I found that out, I was like, well, yeah. that kind of makes the whole thing yeah. seem. He's Sounds gonna, like he, maybe he was just trying to tip the scale a little bit. Like, maybe yeah. this, you know, get her to like yeah, me. And then, did, uh, uh, <laughs> she'll really push this out there. Did they, did, yeah. But he went to jail. Is he in jail? Uh, he's in prison, yeah. Yeah. Are they together still, or they're? I don't know, yeah. but they had a, a relationship. 
Started. And they show that in the show? No, no, it came out afterwards. Yeah. It's presented as this kind of... Now, if she gets murdered by an owl while he's in jail... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. Let's get that guy out. Yeah. Let's get him that, out. He, Let's get him out. So. That would be wild. That would be, what if, like, one, yeah. of the, Three. one, of, one yeah. of Joe Biden's pardons? Yeah. <laughs> this is the owl guy. This is the owl guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes, well, he had, I mean... We saw the documentary. We saw you the know? documentary. We watched it, I, I believe. <laughs> it's not Joe Exotic. <laughs> Yeah, He's still yeah, yeah. in jail. Running for president. Running for president in jail. Did anybody, uh, was there another post? Uh, yeah, there's at least one more, isn't there? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is, <laughs> so Nick, the, we had, <laughs> we had uh, a lion versus, how, how, people said we said emu wrong, too. They did. But I don't know how you're supposed to say it. Um, somebody, <clears throat> somebody in Australia said. A mew? Oh, we're not going to mm-hmm. trust them. A mew. E- they say everything wrong down there. We, we say emu, emu, and they say emu. Emu. Oh, that sounds wrong, dude. It just sounds yeah, like emu. saying like emu. cell phone or cell phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now, well, first of all, those are results. They still picked the line, even with emu with a gun. But you've got something <laughs> going for you, uh, Nate. Many, many people pointed out that in Australia in the 1930s, there was a war against the emus. <laughs> And the emus won. Mm, wow. They were taking over, <clears throat> I think, a lot of farmland. It was becoming a real problem. Yeah. They call it the Great Emu War. And the Australian government, military, went up against them and lost. Yeah. So, well, wow. Gave Probably, up, the, wow. What strategy did the uh, emus use? The, <laughs> so the they know how to plans. use a gun. Maybe. Could yeah. You, I, I meant to look that up. Yeah. Did you? So, like, so we had emu it, war or something. And the like emu that? has a pouch in his neck. So then I claimed that the emu uh, was has a gun, and he fought the lion, and he won with the gun. While a number of the birds were killed, the emu population persisted and continued to cause crop destruction. So they were just tearing up yeah. farms all over Australia. That's a military operation. Yeah. They couldn't I even mean, do it. big time. Now, the war lasted one month, one week, and one day. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Australian government uh, surrendered. <laughs> and they go, you know what? Our country animal is the emu. That's what happened. They probably just had to give in. Yeah, yeah. yeah and like, the emus go, I want to be on your flag. And they go, all right. <laughs> Will you not eat yeah. all our crops? They go, we're, so we're back off the crops. Right. Yeah. A little. <laughs> but we're back off the crops. But you have to treat us a little yeah. more respect. We lucked out having an eagle. Yeah. You yeah. could have had an emu. You could have had an emu. So they were already having problems. And then 20,000 new emus showed up because they, they migrate after their breeding season. So oh. they just started coming in and drove, just I mean, tearing up farms. Dude, that's like, the thing. Emus are, I think maybe that's why they, I say emu. Mm. That's probably where they're saying, I'm saying wrong. An emu. I say moo. Emu. So. This is the guy that invented emus. And <laughs> there's a... What a great idea he had. Yeah, yeah. such a good idea. But so this with this wild. background, what is it? Go ahead. Okay, so the first attempt, right? They had a, a group of soldiers and they found 50. And the birds scattered, so they were difficult to target. They ended up killing perhaps a dozen out of 50, and they're armed with guns. These emus are uh, evasive. Mm. That's what I mean. And now it has a gun. Yeah. <laughs> so we had the yeah. emu was, has a pouch, and no one frisked the emu's neck, mm-hmm. and it has a gun in the pouch, and that's why he beats the lion. So it's hard for him to get the lions. It's hard for him to get them, and he has a gun. Yeah. So that's why the emu still wins with the gun. I'm looking for numbers of how many they killed. And okay, so right here. The bounty system instigated in 1923, 57,000 bounties were claimed over a six month period. So listen, human beings took out 57,000 emus mm-hmm. and they still were just like, we have to give up. Yeah. But who won the war? The emus. You, yeah. They you you might have won the fight, they won the war. They spared fifty seven thousand yeah. of their own, and they're like they don't care. It's barely a dent. Yeah, yeah. And apparently, they're making a a comedy movie about it with Rob Schneider that's supposed to be produced this year. Oh, and man. all those emus are in heaven with seventy two virgins. <laughs> yeah. 
So heaven might be <laughs> crazy, crazy amount of music. <laughs> like, hang on. yeah, uh, yeah. I, I look, I, I think the Emu still wins. He has a gun. Yeah, I mean, we're not changing it, but and then the I don't think I did the poll, but the Orca Well, excuse me, Killer Well mm-hmm. uh, versus Great White Shark. Everyone said there's a lot of video out there of Killer Wells killing great white sharks mm-hmm. just for fun that's what we said right? yeah, yeah. So, i think we all said that so we yeah. got that one a killer whale is a problem i've 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 uh interacted with one. Oh well it was a one video. Of your if, you, if you look up uh no if you look <laughs> one up of your pilots that didn't go <laughs> on youtube if you look up nick thune interacts with a killer whale wow um i was in canada and uh these there was like four babies and yeah. we were, i was crabbing and this thing was like that close, you know, it seems like no big deal, yeah. but like, I can't believe I'm looking at a killer whale kind of feeling. Dude. And then it just keeps coming closer. This you filming? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, that's getting very close. Wait, wait. <laughs> right now it's like, oh, wait, where is it going to be now? Oh. Uh huh. Oh, I'm in like a 16 foot boat, by the yeah. way. And it just goes ahead and goes right under my boat. Wow. wow. You could have reached out. And, and then it. now is just like the silence of like, Oh my God! When I mean, it could flip how. your boat, yeah. no problem, right? Yeah, and then all of a sudden, are you freaking out at this? Point? Yeah, I was like short of breath. I didn't know what was happening. Are you by yourself? No, <laughs> hmm. my uh, my my ex father in law was in there. That's actually what caused the divorce. Hmm. Yeah, was the orca <laughs> the way he handled it versus yeah. the way you handled it? <laughs> uh, then it just went away, and you didn't see it anymore. Uh, no, then we actually ended up seeing it for like the rest of the day. Oh, really? Yeah. Like it was just around. But apparently, so, but the wow. reason that it did that is because we were too close to the babies. So it, it, um, it was like letting us know like, Hey man, you know? Yeah. But we weren't, I, we were there when we saw them. It wasn't like I was encroaching. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm surprised that he didn't get that. I know. It's like, and hey. then, uh, <laughs> yeah, he should, the killer should have been like, he's like, yeah, obviously, dude, we know the babies are here. <laughs> <laughs> I had just pulled the crab thing in too, and like, it was right over that edge. And I was thinking, like, what if I was halfway with the crab and the killer whale just caught a hold of that? Yeah. Yeah. Just, you'd be gone. Wow. That is crazy, dude. Is it just like so seen it that close? You're just like, they're so big and beautiful. Yeah. Oh, God. It was so gorgeous. Mm-hmm. It's def- and then you feel how small you are and how yeah. quickly everything could have mm-hmm. just ended. He could have just flipped you over with his tail and just went yep. about his day. Mm-hmm. That tail got so close. Yeah, wouldn't even go to jail for it. No, no one, would- <laughs> no one would try to find him. No. Nope. And I, yeah, and they're probably tough, you know. By the way, great camera work too. I would say it was. A, it's it was a solid, it's pretty good. good camera work. I'm definitely scared. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but you got to get those hits on social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. keep rolling wow yeah uh yeah well i look forward to getting back into the uh it asked racket. me to tag it afterwards it said hey can you tag me yeah well you know how they are <laughs> we had one comment <laughs> saying please don't do animal fights it's not funny but i'm not saying that they're necessarily they signed a waiver we're not saying necessarily right, really, that they right. that they even die, but they just fight until one of them taps out. And what yeah. did somebody say it was like inhumane? To I think that's what they were implying. Yeah. Well, I gave an emu a gun. Yeah. So <laughs> it seems fair. I think we're. I don't think I don't I, think anybody's taking it very serious yeah. when I <laughs> have an emu that I can't pronounce. Yeah. With a gun, people yeah. aren't supposed to be concerned about animals killing animals. Yeah, that's just what they do. That's right. what they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I guess in this situation, we are <laughs> forcing them, grabbing to. them, and dropping them in the Roman. Coliseum. No, they all. They're all. I mean, what do we think they're, this is like a Russell Crowe situation where he was put into slavery and then? <laughs> yeah. No, I think these animals are signing up, and I think right. they're signing up. There is prize money. We got a hold of their agent. And the said, pride hey. of their species is on the line. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We yeah. saw your lion's tape look good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'd love to see yeah. him in the ring. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's everybody's there for their own. Yeah, uh, it's like saying, it's like acting like Mike Tyson got forced into the ring or something. Yeah, it's like no. Yeah, it's like that. He's born to do that. Yeah. These are these are the these are the UFC fighter animals mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of right. their group. This right. is what they want. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. And every country is being represented. That's right. It's like the Olympics. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. 
It's yeah. true. Now that would be interesting though if it was like if it was like okay a lion that knew he was in there against a reluctant tiger <laughs> who was like I I didn't sign up for this yeah. you know that's a different type of fight. Well, you feel bad for the lion because the lion is pretty shocked that the emu was allowed to bring a gun in, <laughs> and so but that yeah. was, that was a big. Uh, I didn't know we could have guns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I said, and I, I think going forward, there's a lot more frisking. Yeah, and a lot more. Yeah, they right. they, they 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 did mm-hmm. not. They frowned upon that. Yeah, uh, he's they, not gonna be able to do it again. Next yeah, round. Next round, they no go. Gun. I mean, they're gonna. Do we know who the gun was registered under? <laughs> no, that's a good question. That is a good mm-hmm. question. I think the serial number was filed off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he maybe got it from like some know. sort of a fake buyback program yeah. that it ran outside yeah, of Seven yeah. Eleven or something. Yeah. Well, all right, that cheetah and wolf, did we give it to the cheetah? I think we, oh, you just I switched think we it. ended up giving it to the wolf. Okay. Now, you've been hyping switching. up this wolf the whole time, but just know that it's got the emu in the next round. By the way, what is that wolf doing with gun. its... Huh? Just scratching a little it bit. It looks like its feet are up on a table, just like... I know. Yeah, it's trying to look cute. That's a, it's, it's like a, a, it's a pet. It's just like a regular animal. The cheetah is a, a warrior. Wait, are we... You, we're switching it? No, we, everyone agreed on the wolf except me. I, was I think the last one. week we never definitively... I thought we said, let's sit on it. And- yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. But wait, so now it, it could be wolf against emu? Does, and the emu, does it have the gun still? No, no. now it fristed well, for the we're, gun. Oh, we, okay, yeah. that did happen. The judges are, were not happy with that. Okay. But, yeah. I mean, he gets to keep going. Yeah. But, I mean. Well, because the lion's dead. The lion's dead. It's a <laughs> shocker. I mean, it is It yeah. is blown. I mean, people. <laughs> he killed it? He killed it with the gun. Oh, yeah. I mean, people are blown away. I mean, pe- I mean Vegas. Especially the lion. The odds of Vegas are. I mean, you know, they're like, do we even have to pay? Because right, yeah. of the people that bet on the emu. I mean, he had a gun. One yeah. guy bet gun. Yeah, one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. So we got some good matchups coming next round. We got sure. some good matchups coming. We're still coming. working through the first round of this bracket, yeah. though. I can tell you, I'm going to try to make uh, the opposite of what everybody mm-hmm. says. And you did when. a good job. I mean, you, I mean, you convinced us to vote for the, the emu. Well, well it had a gun. Us. Well, that's convinced. That's it a had form a gun. Of it's a form of convincing. Yeah. Uh, we could also rattle through this and do the real answers and be done in one second. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. or we could have a good time <laughs> and right. give an emu a gun. Are we not going to yeah. do one right now? Like we can do one right now. Let's do uh, what you. Uh, let's see. Go down. Not. Let me see what this, um, uh no, That's a fun one. Uh, elephant and a rhino. Now, we've also pointed out, Nick, it's not like a college basketball 16 versus one. Whoever put these together seems to put two pretty similar animals in the first yeah. round against each other. So, some heavy hitters going out in the first round. Yeah. Yeah. There are some bizarre matchups in this. Yeah. That's, that's a, let, is that a, bab- that's a baboon versus let's, a turkey? Let's do that one. We'll do that one for you, Nick. I've actually been oh. around a baboon before. Oh. All right. Let wow. me look up Nick Thu interacts no, with baboons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is, they are scary. Yeah. Because they they look they're walking around yeah basically yeah like they look the way that this one approached me it looked like like the way that a basketball player would approach like a dunk on a dunk contest yeah you know like they know what the hoops is yeah. and where, where they're gonna jump and yeah they are yeah yeah they're very human like uh, monkeys make me uncomfortable just how human they look yeah I don't like looking at them you go to the zoo you're just a little. Well, it's odd, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. odd that they're... They got those butts, too. Yeah. Yeah, they got a lot going. Oh, jeez, dude. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> One just yawned yeah, what is in the this? video. It's this is a, just some baboons uh, running Baboons, around. yeah. I forgot the name. Uh, contraction. And <laughs> the baboons... Uh, yeah, I think baboons are mean, dude. I think baboons are mean. But I think turkeys can be mean. Look at the way they're scaling that wall. Yeah. I mean, there's no walls think. like that. So a big him, a, here's you may you may you may you may you may give me some turkey stuff. Well, go ahead. Okay. Well, I gotta go about, some... If I go in here, will y'all hear it on the air? Yeah, probably. probably. So You're I should here. go somewhere else. Yeah. All right, y'all keep going. All right. All right. See ya. Uh, finally get the podcast good. <laughs> uh, turkeys are dangerous. Turkeys are dangerous. So I would say. Here's something that I was even thinking about, the fact that turkeys can fly. Mm-hmm. That's going to change the way this fight plays out. Because the baboon's going to be climbing up on stuff. Well, with d- up domesticated up. turkeys, they don't. 
Well, we're talking about. We're talking about a wild, wild. I mean, the meanest wild, heavier. Imagine yeah. these animals have competed in their own prelims. We got the best of the best going on. Yeah, I like to think it was adopted by a a domesticated family, but yeah. it's wild. Yeah, that could be true. I mean, they can so f- it's been it's learned. You know, I don't know, got an education. And- right, right, right. Mm-hmm. It can hold its own. Mm-hmm. They fly up to fifty five miles per hour. These wow. turkeys can fly. Wow. So, yeah. Golly, that's crazy. They, they can, sleep in trees. They can change colors. Yeah. You know how like pitching, how like this year somebody threw like 108 miles an hour? Yeah. You know? Uh, are, tur- are turkeys just always going to be at 55 or are there some that are doing new things? Going Maybe even getting up to 60, That's 65? very fast. Their eyesight covers 270 degrees. I mean, that's like- they have great vision. Great vision. Had three times better vision than humans. Yeah, so that means that they're like, their eyes are protruding. Yeah. So that could be actually bad, though. The baboon could just knock one of those eyes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a tough stat there at the end. 46 million turkeys are killed every year for Thanksgiving. <laughs> so it's just like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, they I'm not it. a fan of turkey. It's my, it's for me. Nobody. I've always yeah. thought this. It is not the star of the show at Thanksgiving meal. I'm a ham. It's, I'm a, the sides. Honey, honey baked ham. Sides. Yeah. Honey baked ham and sides. Right. I'm not a turkey person. Uh, I don't like turkey. Yeah. I don't think turkey's ever good. Uh, I've had know. it good twice, I think. Yeah. Uh, we're reading, this is a list of on the World Animal Protection website trying to get us to eat less meat. Well, I won't eat turkey. So <laughs> there you go. They we're doing eat. our part. Yeah, we're doing our part. Yeah, I mean, look at like a turkey fight. Yeah, how they attack? I guess they yeah. just got their beak. We got a wild turkey fight here. Oh jeez. Yeah. Oh man, look at a guy. You got two turkeys going at it. They're kind of right now. They're going. Yeah, do something. Do something. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. The fact that they they can. Uh, here, let me. They're right. kind of just wrapping their necks around each other right now. So I'll try to. I'll try to. I'll try to argue for the turkey. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the baboon. Everybody's like, this fight's done. The baboon even is arrogant about this fight because okay. the baboons are very arrogant. Uh, I agree. I mean, they're arrogant as they come up to people. They don't care. Mm-hmm. So he's very arrogant. The turkey. It's like people are not even coming to this fight. Like they didn't even. They're not even buying. This is the first fight of the day. Yeah. People are showing up late. They're like, I'm not going to waste my time on this fight. It's pointless. That baboon goes in. He's just like walking around. The hinds up. He's doing a lot of showing for the crowd. They're very oh, sure. showmanship. Yeah. They're very like. Ah. Uh, he's like yeah, cl- <laughs> climbing the w- walls and stuff like that. He did not do his due diligence on turkeys. Do not realize. So he climbs up pretty high. Say he goes through the crowd, climbs up. I mean, he's this is their show. He's putting on a show. He's putting on a show. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows that they can fly up to fifty-five miles per hour. This turkey flies and gets going fast, and then just knocks the baboon off, and it falls to the ground, and then just comes down fifty-five miles per hour and just lands on it and just ends it. Well, what about the baboon? Because the bab, you know, like a lion in there, it could jump, but it's not going to be able to climb. Like baboons can climb. You That's know? what I'm so saying. What if it gets out of what if? But what if it gets like out of the ring and it like climbs up one of the banisters? That's what I don't know if you were listening when I was talking. No, I was watching the <laughs> it turkey was fight. Exactly <laughs> what I was saying. Yeah, it was uh, to a T. Of, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, the baboon I tune out again and pitch yeah. it. <laughs> the baboon has climbed up the Coliseum. Yeah. Because he's putting on a show like uh-huh. no one's even he's, he's showing just, up. It's like when a wrestler yeah. stands up in the corner of the ring. Yeah. He's doing all that. The crowd is mostly full of other baboons watching baboons. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you know, humans are not even in there. This is basically all baboons have bought these tickets. Yeah. And they're all in there, and it's like it's climbing up the walls yeah, and it's putting yeah. on a show. And he gets pretty high and starts like climbing across the top and like, you know, just uh you know, kind of like the because the turkey's like chasing it a little bit, so he's just like running, for, like kind of mocking it. It's kind of a funny idea too, if no turkey showed up and it was all baboons. Yeah, 
No, no one. Yeah, no one expects. No, you just said that. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, the teeth. I mean, everything is saying this baboon is 100% going to win this fight. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying the arrogance of the baboon is he's not taking it serious. Okay. And we, and none of us are, we are blown away. You're saying hubris is his fatal flaw. <laughs> that a turkey can fly 55 miles an hour. I mean, did anybody expect that? No, I had no idea. And that's what happened. I've never thought of a turkey flying. I'll be honest yeah. with you. I thought they were like penguins. That, and the, 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 the baboon gets high up on top of the Coliseum. He's, he's climbed up. He's on top. Crowd's going nuts, Crowd, to be fair. it's all baboons. Yeah. It's all baboons. <laughs> so the crowd's going crazy. And he's up there going, and the turkey's just on the ground, and they're all laughing at the turkey. And the turkey just starts running. He starts running in circles, getting some speed going. Getting some, they're quick. He's getting some speed going. And then lifts off, and at 55 miles an hour, he gets this baboon quick, and he just, boom, just hits it off the top. It claws. flies. With the, yeah. yeah, with his claws and hits it. It falls to the ground. This calls him hundreds of feet in the air. Falls to the ground. And then uh, slams on it, and the turkey kills it and wins. Mm -hmm. And people are shocked. They're more shocked than the emu with the gun. Because a few <laughs> people expected the emu bring a gun. They were like, you know, I've been around these emus. A few people knew about the war in Australia. So they go, this, the emus are very gun heavy. So the turkey... I mean, the baboon just—it's arrogance. Yeah. Also, caused the, it to fall. The baboon that they sent in might have been like, "Hey, this is just a turkey. Why don't we send in this guy?" You know, he might not be the best baboon. Yeah. Well, I think they picked uh, one baboon, and so, but I think the baboon just like—he's just like—he's like, "I'm gonna have fun on this fight because this is this shouldn't even be a fight." Right. And he's like really preparing for who's he fighting next. He's looking ahead. Right. He's and looking he's, ahead to the next round. Yeah. He's gonna fight the winner of. <laughs> A two wells, two wells. Yeah. So, so I mean, that's tough. So like, like, I mean, he's been water training. Yeah. He's for the turkey. Thinking. He's been water. Yeah. He's water training. He's uh -huh. trying to. He's going after whales' eyes and stuff uh -huh. like that. <laughs> he's just not even remotely thinking about this turkey. It's a waste of his time. And the baboons on the top mocking it. The turkey starts running in circles. Gets okay. going. Hits him off. It is the baboons. I mean, it becomes a. I, you know what? I'll even give you. That the baboons in the crowd then go kill that turkey. A mob? A mob mm -hmm. of the baboons go kill that turkey. So the winner of this fight, we just end up having being a baboon, but it's not the original baboon. <laughs> yeah. Because the baboons, but what we, the rules are coming down now. We have not liked what's going on. Mm -hmm. We had one, and then we bring a gun, and the turkey won. But the baboons in the crowd. But the baboon advances. Because. The baboon advances because the baboon didn't attack that turkey. Uh -huh, mm. yeah. And that's a shame. And that's and that shouldn't have happened. And I mean, as as the the point, I am you know, I, I'm the uh, Roger Goodell of this. I go, I am ashamed right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. I go, we never saw this coming. He gets booed everywhere. I get booed <laughs> everywhere I walk out. I go, I didn't see that coming. I go, an emu with a gun. I, I go, we frisked these animals. It looks more on you now. I know. Yeah, but then, but we know you knew. I know, but then they're like, why did you let all the baboons get the tickets? I go, no one was buying the tickets. No one wanted to watch this fight. Well, it's like you a did two for one baboon. You did two for one. He goes, he goes well, I was just trying to move some tickets. <laughs> no, I don't think it's that. I think it's the opposite. I think it's like a K pop band. Baboons are such big f fans yeah. of them. They'll just scalp them all up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll use game time yeah. and then they'll get the seats they want. Yeah. And the next, but I say for the next fight, the baboons are not, no baboons allowed to watch the baboon fight. Well, last week you said there's no gun. What are you doing? You're, you're things it's, falling out. We learn as we go. It's we the learn first as time we go. We've done this, you know. Yeah. Well, we yeah. learn as we go. Okay. We got you it. realize what fun is, right? <laughs> I know, but you're a commissioner. <laughs> Commissioners can't have fun. They got to have some rules here. I know, but I'm making up the fun as we go. You realize that we're trying to have a good time here. And even mm -hmm. we got a gun. I've just made the bamboo go Brian's ahead. Where we got PETA coming after us, yeah. dude. We're yeah. trying, we got a lot to worry. Yeah, about. we yeah. can also not do this and just no. not have any fun. I'm but I'm saying the baboon moves ahead. Dusty will be surprised on why the baboon moved ahead. I agree. He's not going to realize that the turkey did win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the other baboons got involved. Yeah. And then they just peer pressured me. I mean, they showed up at my house. Right, right. They threatened my family. Twisted your arm. I said, the baboon goes on. But I made them a deal. I go, you are not allowed to come to the next baboon fight. Right. And you're right. fighting a whale. We don't know which one. 
Mm-hmm. So you're fighting a whale. We don't whale. even know what those whales are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So good luck with that. Uh, the baboons have been a nightmare but, I mean, for me. What is the whale going to do in that coliseum with water-wise? He's got water. You know, you're used, allowed to have your they environment. They used to fill the Roman Coliseum with water. Yeah. And have naval battles inside the Coliseum. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we'll fill the first, you know. Half of its 30 ocean. 30 feet up with water. Mm-hmm. Half of its ocean. Drop them yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. And the other half's not. But, you know, the baboon's going to have to go to the well. <laughs> and the baboon, again, is still arrogant. Yeah. But I, 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 but we're going to see. What, I don't think it's. Yeah. Uh, What's a new baboon? Right? It's a new baboon. And they're mad. <laughs> But I've not now. I've not allowed any baboons. What into if it's this the fight. baboon's son? Yeah. Uh, well, but the before is we. It was all baboons watching the fight because no one even wanted to go watch a baboon and turkey fight, mm-hmm. and the turkey won. But then the. But now I've I've agreed that the baboon can move forward. But during the baboon fight, they're not allowed in the fight. I think we're going to have more trouble with these baboons. Yeah. But it's right now they're not allowed in the fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not not in the baboon turkey fight. In naked gun. Uh, OJ. <laughs> well, not OJ, but Leslie Nielsen's character. He like does something stupid and and he opens up a big gate in the zoo mm. in Los Angeles, and they're running around. And the commissioner's like, "Do you realize because of your actions, baboons are running over this city?" And he's like, "Well, isn't that a fault of the voters?" <laughs> <laughs> I also like now that I'm going more into your whole run here. You're assuming that animals are the ones coming to watch these fights. No, I just made that up at the moment. Okay. I think regular people are, but I think this was a hard ticket to get people to buy. Because mm-hmm. most people think so a turkey a, yeah. is not beating a baboon. But I think baboons support each other. They made a big mistake. So yeah. maybe now no more of that animal that's fighting is allowed to come in at all. Not just baboons. Could be. And maybe at, right now it's baboons, but maybe. We got lions you fighting to today. Single, Sorry, guys. No lions. lions. You hate to single an animal out. So maybe I do say if your because, animal's fighting. But let's know. be honest. They're the only ones causing problems so far. So know? far, yeah. everybody's been pretty there great. Were a whole pack of wolves watching the cheetah fight, and they were fine. They were yeah. fine. Uh-huh. They, 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 what, you know, the wolves are respectful. Cheetahs are respectful. I mean, they're going like, this is what the animals do. What we signed up for. <laughs> I think a gorilla would be more respectful. It's baboons. Baboons are. Yeah. yeah, the problem is you're probably gonna have baboons dressing like gorillas coming in. Mm-hmm. There you go. Could be. We have major security problems yeah. here. Yeah, we had a snail beat a gorilla though. No, I'm <laughs> That's a <laughs> Nate made a strong argument. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and what happened? No, we, they didn't. Snail the had gorilla. A tank. The gorilla f- fall. Gorilla Chris scares Bear. me almost the most. Yeah, I think. Yeah, they're gorillas very scary. seem. Mm-hmm. Insane. Because Insane. they have features like us is up just huge muscles. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. That's it. We got to wrap it up. Uh, everybody, we love you as always. Uh, I'm going to, whenever this comes out, this uh, the next week, I'm somewhere on tour. I'm out and about. Come see us. Adding a bunch of shows. It's great. It's been awesome. It's fun. Uh, I love it. Uh, go check Greg Warren's special out. Where are you going to be? Uh, May 12th and 13th, I'm at Mike Drop Comedy Club in San Diego. Nice. May nice. 21st, Cap City Comedy Club in Austin. Boom. May 26th, 27th, Wise Guys in Salt Lake City. That's awesome, man. May 17th and 18th, I'm at the Irvine Improv in the Ontario Improv in California. So come on out. Never been out mm. there. It's awesome. I have a new uh, res- residency I'm doing in L.A. at the, um, uh, the Lyric Hyperion. Great. Twice a month, yeah. starting May 4th. And then I'll be at the Treehouse Theater in Deerfield, Massachusetts on June 15th, and then the Hereafter in Seattle on June 30th. Nice. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, go check everybody out. Go watch everybody. Uh, Nick Thune, thanks for coming in, buddy. Thanks for having me. It was great. It was fun. There's a bug there. I got it. Uh, I won that fight. You advanced. I advanced <laughs> over the gnat. I advanced over the gnat. Uh, so I moved on the second round. We should have one, maybe one of us. We should have uh, that been good. throw us in this fight. In the bracket. <laughs> in the bracket. Just like who could win, you know? Tiger Look, if people are, with a gun. You can make a vote. If people are upset about this bracket and they want to, if we, since we took this bracket so seriously, if enough people want a new bracket and it can add us and like 
or whatever and go through it and make it more strategic we can. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think they're really enjoying this one, but I think yeah, okay. they want to keep going. Yeah. Do some more brackets. People have sent us their own brackets. Oh, really? Yeah. Of animals? Of just different things. Yeah. You can, all right. Well, send us brackets of different things. We're, we're finished just animals. Send one us out. one of comics fighting. I want to do that one. I think there's already some on there. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. Comics fighting is good. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, as always, uh, we love you. And I hope you have a wonderful week. You're going to have a wonderful week, and we will see you uh, next week. Uh, All right. Ah. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetsy, and my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.